what's going to end up happening is a lot of these big TV networks, a lot of these big record labels, mm-hmm. they're going to start going to the hoods. Well, they don't go to the hood. No, 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 they don't. But they're going to start going there. They're going to start going to the neighborhoods and they're going to start going to the black people. Why? Because we are the top consumers. When I was stuck in Miami, I had zero money. And I remembered, oh, damn, I've got crypto. You put some Bitcoin. I know, you told me. (laughs) (laughs) I got you on the line. Even even the the ticket to fly (laughs) here, come back home. I put it (laughs) on. I like to search what my nieces and nephews are listening to. You know what I mean? Right. And I saw a lot of them were listening to Triple X Extentacion or whatever mm. they call him. I don't know how to pronounce that yeah, still to this yeah, day. You know what I mean? I, I just don't want my yeah. nieces and nephews to laugh at me because they're going to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I hope I got too. it right. They be like, Uncle, you don't know what that like. Uh, hey, no, I don't know. Yeah. It's not what they showed us on TV. No, nah, it's, it's, it's happening over there. Yeah. It's like, good. You know, leave the attitude, leave the Western culture mindset, the, the behaviors, leave that over there. Yeah. But when you come here, learn you some know, Ubuntu. Learn some Ubuntu. <laughs> Dango, excitement's all the way, energies are high, we're vibrating on another level, we're in green, we're chilling, and it's a beautiful brothers engaging, coming together and having a, a beautiful brothers convo. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I mean, we had a great episode on Monday, and yes, I'm back on radio. I want to appreciate everyone that's been welcoming me back on radio. I miss radio. I really miss radio. I, and I know last year... Um, I went crazy on my brother, Sizwe Jomo. <laughs> Sizwe, you were correct. I miss radio, bro. And um, I'm back, man. Thank you, t- t- 2000. Spooner, you must just say if you need a job, dog. Just say if you, need, <laughs> like, if you need a job, bro. Like, you know, you must just, like, all this stuff that you're doing right now, like, bro, just say you want a job back at, you know what I mean? Just say it. <laughs> That's how we Welcome put it. back to the country, bro. <laughs> That's how you put it. <laughs> it's so funny. I was actually talking to Spooner for, like, I mean, um, to Sizwe for an hour. Um, when I arrived here yeah. to shoot today, yeah, like um, so, I was supposed to arrive at I don't know what it was twelve o'clock, right? Right? Was it twelve? I think it time? was twelve. Yeah, yeah so I arrived 12, at, yeah. at quarter to um, twelve, and then I was on the phone um, with Cesar, yeah, for like maybe forty-five minutes, yeah, outside, and then I only called you at like half past twelve to say, "Yo, I'm outside." <laughs> No, no, but let me tell you what's beautiful. <laughs> what, what's beautiful is that you arrived before I did. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So, so he's hungry. <laughs> Clearly, there's something he learned in New York. Couldn't stay I've away. always been that guy. A city of dreams. I've always been that guy. I, I, I once was late for a meeting with Carl Anderson when we were still at Just Music, when we were trying to um, negotiate a licensing deal uh, with Carl Anderson. This is before he m- moved to Apple Music. And actually, um, congratulations to Carl and Lungi Naidu, who just welcomed their twins um, very recently. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, Carl Anderson says, you know, you're late for a meeting. You don't get a second meeting with some people. And sure. that's the hard lesson you have to learn. And he taught me that lesson. And I've never been late to another meeting with Carl Anderson, particularly. <laughs> but I try not to be late. I try to be early. Like, right. So me, myself, DJ Fresh, mm. Robert Marawa, Thibaut Touch. Mm. Who is it? Who else? Marawa, Touch, Fresh, myself. Mm. All the four of us. You remember working on our own yeah, radio yeah, platform. Yeah. By that time, when we're having multiple meetings, mm. you're five minutes late, mm. you are 1,000 rands um, into the kitty. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So we oh. charge. So if you're 10 minutes late, 2,000 yeah. rands into the kitty. Yeah. So the next time when we get together, you're the one that pays for lunch or for the bill. Mm. So if you're 15 so minutes late, yeah. you owe the crew three grand. Yeah. I've never been so. late ever since meeting yeah. those guys. And, and shout out to the guys. Proud of all of your guys doing well. We're all doing great. I'm mm. also excited. I'm back on radio. President Levo Walton gave mm. us an incredible interview on Monday. Go check out the comments if you've missed that episode. That was part mm. one. Part two is now because we're welcome, welcoming him back from New York. Mm-hmm. Ah. But I just wanted to humble myself and appreciate you, bro, and, oh, intro- and, and introduce you to this incredible brother. <laughs> yes, sir. How you doing? Man. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good, man. Actually, I was going to uh, comment about that timing. 
Uh, I've got a military family who say, if you're 10 minutes early, you're on time. Yeah. If you're on time, you late, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah you're late. Exactly. You're already late. So now I'm going to start t- telling the rest of my team, listen, when you show up, if you late, it's a thousand rand. Yeah, yeah. a thousand rand. <laughs> that's a, that's a $50. $50. Yeah, yeah, 50 <laughs> Hey, that's a quarter rand, but it adds up. Yeah, yeah. it adds so, up. So what that means is have a whole bunch of meetings. <laughs> exactly. Be a rich man by the end of the week. Yeah. How did you, how, oh. how was the, and I know it's only, it's hardly been a day and a half or two days. Yeah. That um, our episode has, you know, came out on Monday. Oh, mm. it's what, three, four days? It's Friday yeah. today. Yeah. <clears throat> it's Friday. Last exactly. week was Good Friday. Yeah. But let me say, uh, how has it been? I mean, what's the feedback from the people in the States? Because what I, that's what I love about this internet space. Yeah. You put it up, the whole world can watch right. it. I think, honestly, the, the hunger has been has been real. The interest, of course, you got a few trolls. That's kind of normal. But, you know, <laughs> you got to deal with the trolls under the bridge and the ones on the wall. So, But other than that, you've got a lot of people who are excited, who are interested. I think their eyes are opening up to what's really going on across the waters. As far as the diaspora goes, what's going on across the waters and the possibilities. It's, it's endless, man. And I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. You know, the hunger is real. Tamulo Baloi, that's his name, mm-hmm. uh, a.k.a. Nota, mm-hmm. meet President Lavelle Walton. President oh. Lavelle Walton, meet Salute, Mr. Nota. <laughs> Salute. Blesses, Salute. man. Yes, sir. Way, you, you, you can about... ask questions each other so you, you uh, can go to, yeah. get to know each other before we can uh, continue. No, I mean, um, obviously, I got an intro from uh, the episode that you guys did mm. as well. And I've also seen some of the work that he's been doing since you guys have been documenting <coughs> um, the work. Yeah. Uh, that you guys are, are doing here, but I just wanted to welcome you. Thank you, man. You know I appreciate mean? it. Love. Apart from just having a conversation, it's very important to have um, you African Americans here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Our job, our generation's duty is to teach you Ubuntu. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, it's incumbent upon us mm-hmm. to not only um, welcome you to our shores, but to encourage you to bring others. Right. Um, because that is the mission of our generation. Um, that is the goal of Nelson Mandela, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and that's why he came to America when he was free, um, so that he can make sure that all of us are free. Right. You know what I mean? None of us are free until all of us until are free. Until all of us are free. Exactly. Yeah. And that's real, man. I mean, honestly, it, it, historically, we know that everybody in the diaspora, the word diaspora alone means scattered or dispersed. Yeah. yeah. So that alone lets us know that our origin, our place uh, 400 years ago has always been here mm-hmm. on the continent, sub-Saharan Africa. Mm-hmm. But it's been so long since we've been away. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Exactly. And descended down. So Well, all of Africa, actually. You know, they, they say sub-Saharan because they like to make as if North Africa is Arab. No. It's, yeah, no. Those people are black. Yeah, yeah they were all <laughs> the black. The Egyptians were black yeah. as, and they were all conquered, actually. but it was all black and they all they were Nubians up, yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know uh, they said uh, 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 Putite uh, a whole bunch of people from from uh, what is the countries up there Morocco and all yeah. that they were all black yeah exactly the Moors everybody yeah, was the all Barbers, black everyone yeah and you know they all kind of scattered or were conquered or whatever the case is and uh, I, I think coming back home is 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 like Hey, man, it's a dream come true, man. I'm mm-hmm. loving it. And the love in South Africa is, like, genuine. It's real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm loving it, man. I've been walking around with no shoes on, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, put my feet in the I'm soil. I'm impressed you're doing yeah. that with shoes on. <laughs> Hugging I'm trees. Get the rubber away, man. <laughs> yeah, get the rubber Absorb the energy from the, the ground, from the flow. motherland. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. You know, my feet stink. Let the ground talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want nobody else talking. Just the ground. hug some trees. <laughs> hug some trees. Exactly. Yeah, you know, hug some trees. I ain't climbing them no more. I'm a little older now. You know what I I, I can hug them. You yeah. know, uh, no, man, I'm loving it, man. I, I'm loving every bit of it. And I tell everybody in the diaspora, yo, come on. And there's more, There's people coming, though. Yeah. There are folks coming, and they finding out, yo, this really life over there. Yeah. It's not what they showed us on TV. Yeah. It's not what they showed us on TV. Nah, it's, it's, it's happening over there. Yeah. It's like, good. You know, leave the attitude, leave the Western culture mindset, the, the behaviors. Leave that over there. Yeah. But when you come here. Learn you some know, Ubuntu. Learn some Ubuntu. How beautiful <laughs> did you say earlier, Nota, before we started recording, that it was seamless for him to even integrate just into the country? Maybe you can yeah, expand exactly. on that. Mm. I mean, like for a lot of my American friends who've been traveling here, you know. Because um, Mzanti is a gateway to the rest of the country. Yeah, so it's a lot of friends that have been meeting in the States so he's tell me that, yo, I'm going to South Africa, please, you know, let me know what's happening. And none of them have ever had any complaints about not being able to access any services. Apple right. Pay works everywhere, you know. Um, uh, our cell phone networks, mm-hmm. the roaming capabilities are there. You know, if mm-hmm. you're on T-Mobile, like it's even better. You know, um, yeah. You if you've got an Uber app, it works. It works. Yeah, yeah. my Uber app, app works. Yeah. Yeah. works. Exactly. <laughs> you know so what I mean? I'm like, yo, it's easy to just land and just connect. 
Yeah, I was yeah. like, wait a minute. So th- you know this street over here, Uber? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you you got satellites up there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Like TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. The roads are smooth. The yeah. infrastructure is there. Yeah. The roads are somewhat in. smooth because them potholes are real, man. Yeah, <laughs> they're not as bad as Atlanta, though. No, 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 no. No, no. 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 Yeah, yeah. Atlanta's yeah, yeah. bad, yo. <laughs> hey, I almost think that they want your tires to pop. Like, like yo. In Atlanta, why do they have. Like with those roads, and they have like twenty-three inch, you know, like <laughs> that. Yeah, you talk about the wheels, the yeah. tires. Oh yeah, everybody's riding on twenty-eight. You yeah, know? <laughs> well, even bigger. You know yeah, I mean? so, yeah. No, so. no, nah, it's bad, man. Them, them potholes. I, I've, okay, so I've driven out on the N four out to Mpumalanga. Yeah. And the potholes over there, just on the way. Yeah. Before you hit the main strip and the the the, the rural spaces of Mpumalanga, yeah. it's it's crazy. You know, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah. But uh, Atlanta. Oh, no, nah, man. I almost think y'all need to get 28-inch rims on your car man. just to save yourself. <laughs> Atlanta is bad, yo. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. It is, it is. So, yeah, I mean, some of the things, uh, you know, um, are comparable and mm. other things, you know, obviously uh, there's different places where there's different levels of development. But mm. one thing that's consistent is that, you know, where black people dominate, um, the services are subpar. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Atlanta is one of those places where, you know, yeah. white folk in America say, I never knew there was this many black people mm-hmm. until I went to Atlanta, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. it only it's, figures. It's, yeah, it's almost like trying to disconnect us from quality service. You yeah. Know? Minimize it, frustrate it, so you spend your monies in all those other areas. Exactly. You know, but but the the, the thing is, is, you know, y'all got to forgive me, I'm optimistic. I always yeah. look for the whole... That's it. I blame it on all the hustlers. Hustlers Corner, by the way. I blame it on all the... <laughs> I blame it on all the hustlers I was raised around. I look for the loophole. I look for the way. Like, yeah. Okay, so how does this work? And so uh, I, I think every single black person who's worked for those major companies have learned something. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, all right, we'll recreate it. Do our own thing. No, no yeah. need to reinvent. Just recreate. Yeah. Exactly. But own it. Exactly. That way we run it. For those who missed the Monday episode, just maybe a quick summary as to mm. who you are, what you do. We'll continue with the convo. Mm. I know some some of your guys do know Nota. Mm. Not yeah. some of you. I think most of y'all know Nota. Everybody know him, right? <laughs> yeah, no. I just oh, found oh, oh, out. Oh, you, you, you knew him before you met him? No, no, no. I just found oh, out. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm the president of UGKA, United Global Kingdoms of Africa, man. Um uh-huh. The whole focus is really uh, uh, resurrecting the kingdoms of the past or the people of the past to lead Africa's future. Yeah. You know, that's the whole focus. It's just uh, uh, united, reconnecting, re- return of the diaspora and reconnecting uh, the continental Bantus or continental Africans and those who are in the diaspora so that we can grow, we can build, we can have a brighter future. Humanitarian, uh, humanitarianism, technological advancement, economics, every aspect of our growth, our success. That's the whole focus. And so that's what UGK is, and I'm spearheading the movement for the time being until it's time to pass the torch. Maybe while they're listening to this, because I know nowadays we listen to these platforms like it's radio. That's what I love about podcasting. They can maybe just quickly go go to their um, mm-hmm. to their internet domains, mm-hmm. uh, www. What's the website? UGKA while they, while now. they're checking out your work, listening to the interview. Mm. UGKANow.com. www.ugkanow.com. UGKANow.com. Right now. Thank yep. you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm really interested to see uh, what the prospects are, especially for this year, because it seems like economically, um, uh, it looks like the worst of times. Um, mm. But for us, that's the most opportune time. Yes. Um, so, I don't think um, you guys might be aware of the current political situation in South Africa. Mm. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a couple of weeks time or well, right. two months time yeah two months at the yeah, most yeah, exactly. May 26th 29th. 29th yeah um, it's the day after my birthday yeah ah, perfect yeah. you know what I mean at least you get two public holidays <laughs> 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 you know your birthday and the real one and we're just coming from two public holidays last exactly. week exactly you holidays, know what I mean yeah. so um, another long weekend coming up it's the first time where we don't know what's gonna be the mm. outcome we have no idea who our president's gonna be and this is something I was saying last year. Is like, you know what? We have no idea who might be our president. You know what mm. I mean? We, we we might be shocked mm-hmm. um, at whatever happens in parliament. You might have a white man as president for the first time. I've seen that. Are I'm you not. Got, are everything. you afraid? Am I afraid of that? I'm used to it in the U.S. So no, I'm not afraid. <laughs> but I, but over here, I'm afraid for. Are you afraid of 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 seeing an 
a South African president being a white man. Yeah, I am. Only because this is where I'm moving. And to see that, I'm like, dang. So they got a hold of uh, all black country, 80, 80% black country. Like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Um, that's terrible. That that cannot happen. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, the, the no, way tell I tell us, tell us. Yeah, tell okay. So, so my thinking you've, is, you've been under white presidents oh, man. for your whole life, yeah. except for eight years, right? Yeah. So, tell us what the experience is, because I mean, Smu was a child when there was a white president in South Africa until what ninety four, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, myself, I wasn't even born. Um, yeah. I spent four years under um, F. W. D. Hitler. And I think even you were not <laughs> born during. Benjamin Frank- Franklin's time. No, no, no. Because no. so a year he was black. Yeah, yeah. No, I, mean, I don't know about that. Oh, was he black? Was he not? Man, no. Benjamin Franklin wasn't black. Oh, he wasn't black? No. Nah, how you get on a $100 no, bill Jefferson. and be black? <laughs> 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 you get on a $100 bill and be black. Of all the top bill, and you black? Nah, they ain't never put you up there. <laughs> Obama ain't even on that. Nah. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, man. I, I, honestly, man, I, I, I fear for... No, nah, I don't even fear. I won't use that word. I, I'm... I find it a problem to have a white man over an all black country, to have white people continue to reign, rule and reign over an all black continent, nations. That's pitiful. Yeah. And for people to even allow such a thing like that is problematic. It's basically like you're saying, OK, rule. Uh, uh, what is that word? Uh, uh, colonize us more. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes. Kill us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Strangle us enslave us you nuts heck no nah, man that shouldn't happen over here and honestly you ought to be looking at every single black uh leader or potential leader and questioning are y'all in cahoots with them folks over there because we know what's happened to us over 100 200 tell us about three, it because we haven't seen it we, you guys because oh, you're in the minority it's mm. much easier for black leaders mm. to you know accelerate the climb up the ladder by assimilating to the white culture uh. or uh, you know patronizing the white mm. leadership so tell us more about that because we haven't seen that um happening and it might be an, an uh, like an evil that we don't see what it could end up being you know what i mean yeah I, honestly it's like dangling the carrot in front of the horse it's like you 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 we're going to give you a chance and then you snatch it away oh you got to keep working mm. uh, let's give you another chance ah it's like you're playing with them. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's literally what it's been like in the U.S. We feel like we finally got a chance of potential freedom. It's like the politicians are continuing to lie to us. Oh, no, no. I'm here to, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have uh, 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 more jobs created. You know, uh, uh, more freedom, more economic growth, uh, uh, greater residential areas, uh, no more gentrification. We're not going to we're going to stop redlining. We're going to give uh, even blacks or African-Americans a greater chance to live in these great, nice neighborhoods. And it never really happens. For example, I hear, oh, yeah, we're going to get rid of. Um, excuse me, this issue with ESCOM, you know, we're, we're going to get rid of that and, and we're going to solve the problem. But I guarantee you three years into it, you'll still be looking like, so where's the solution? I thought you were going to get rid of that. Mm. And what their excuse will be is, oh, you know, it takes a little bit more work, but we're working on it. Mm. No, they're not. They're working on other things. And what you'll see is the same thing Joe Biden did in the U.S. Starts on the first day of being inaugurated, starts signing over 100 new bills. And you'll feel the effects one, two, five, eight years later. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to happen. The same thing that happened over there will happen here if you if you allow it. Sorry to disturb you. I want you to continue talking and just continue with the conversation. Who did more for black people in America between Trump and... and, and Obama. Um, Obama, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say Obama, not Biden. Yeah. Obama, yeah. <laughs> How did you know I was going to say Obama? Because he's the only one... Because he's black, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, for black people. I'm going I'm to be real. Neither one of them did anything good for black people. But if I were to pick the lesser of two evils, it's crazy. I'm going to go with the orange man, Trump. Are you serious? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Because being, being dis, a distance away, being here, uh, I hear a lot of rhetoric. Like, apparently Trump did a lot for black people. A whole lot more than, more than Obama. Obama. Yeah. Mm. Obama didn't do it. Obama did everything for uh, LGBTQ, RS, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. He did all that for them. Yeah. But nothing for black people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there, there was no benefit. But wasn't Obama for black people? Wasn't... No, Obama wasn't was just it, black. America doing something for black people by having Obama as president? And that's that's all they promised you as black people. It's like, we'll make one of you mm-hmm. um, 
president and right. that's what we're doing for black like people what in they, like what they do with the richest celebrities <coughs> yes like they just put a few over there and they're like you see yeah yeah that, that's, that's what, what, what they were doing like those guys. i mean mm. wasn't okay. that what they were doing let's take it back. heck no no listen are we gonna take it back okay maybe that's not what they promised no, let you, them continue right? yeah. I'm, I'm gonna shoot now i'm gonna shoot it to you straight so here, here's what it is in 1972 they put out a movie called superfly showing a rich black drug dealer who was a killer as well in black exploitation era black exploitation area yeah, mm. era right yeah shortly after the black panther party excuse me black panther party first then the movie superfly mm. okay the same thing re repeated in in 2018 mm -hmm. black panther movie came out immediately after that a reboot six month movie never happened not in hollywood mm. six month movie Immediately after Black Panther, the first Black Panther movie, T'Challa, all this stuff. Great black empowerment. Oh, man, vibranium. Yeah, we are great people. Mm. Superfly the reboot. Mm. So the idea is, no, it's the dangle the, 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 the carrot in front of the horse. Mm. Make him think that there's a possibility and snatch it away mm. before he can bite to it. But meanwhile, they're telling our black kids that your role models are dope boys. Yeah, your role models are, are, are rappers who are killers and drug dealers and... Uh, your, your other role models are girls who dress like strippers but say, no, it's just how I want to dress. It's a freedom of expression. Mm. No, it's prostitute clothes. Yeah. That's exactly what that is. Your role models are, are athletes and, and, and all these guys. It's like the, even Malcolm X said it. These are not your – celebrities are not role models. Celebrities are not leaders. Mm. They're just celebrities. They're puppets, people who got paid a whole lot of money to put on a fabrication of who we really are. Mm. That's literally what it is. Mm. And that's what we're facing. So when I look at Obama, I'm like, dude, you were a puppet. Mm -hmm. That's all. You looked good. But the problem is, I think, Obama, you have participation in a whole lot of this, you know, negative stuff that we got to watch out for and the mm. things that we're feeling the effect of. How can I say that? Who's in office right now? Mm. His running mate. His former running mate. Mm -hmm. Who's inspiring behind the scenes? Still Obama. Mm. Who do you think's influencing? Who's in Joe Biden's ears? Mm. Come on, man. It's the, it's the same thing. You know why I like 10 Trump? 10 Downing Street the other day. It, it, right. It's, you know why I like Donald Trump? I like and I dislike. But I, I like it. I don't care what y'all say. I like uh, a little bit about him. This one aspect. One. Just one major aspect. What a relief. He was not a politician. He's a businessman. Mm. Finally, we got somebody who's not another politician who talk around bushes and circles. Mm. To kind of lead us in a way that we don't like. Mm. At least Trump was straight up. Mm. That's true. That he I is, can appreciate. He is still straight up. Extremely vulgar, too. Mm. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I can appreciate that, man. If, At least I know what I'm dealing with. If you were to remember some of the bills, oh, it's, I, it's passing. Don't worry. We don't have to stop. Yeah, it's yeah, passing. It's not going to rain. Yeah, just open it. It's not going to rain. <laughs> we look at it like this. We're like, no, it's passing. <laughs> <laughs> it's passing. Yeah, <laughs> say. So you were talking about the bills, yes. You were talking about the bills, <laughs> you remember that? You remember oh, no, the Kwaito no, no, no. days? We were still too young. Uh, no, no, no. Dude. I don't remember every single song. <laughs> yeah. Because, no, no, no. You must remember that there's certain songs that were banned in yeah. households. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> For yeah. Our, oh no, I get yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> it's not rain that it's not raining. It's just passing. It's just yeah. drizzling. <laughs> No, so guys, don't panic. We call don't these sprinkles in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're it's, summer it's, rainfall it's, area. Don't worry, guys. We'll be fine. Yeah. So what I wanted, what, what I wanted to say is, or what I wanted to ask you is, if there would be one or two bills that you were to specifically say, this man did this for black people. He did also that for. It doesn't have to be three or four. Just even one. Uh, you know, I I, I cannot remember all of them. I would probably say. Um, one thing I liked about, uh, um, what's his name? I just said his name. Donald Trump. The orange man. Sure. Yeah, the orange guy. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing I liked about him, man, is the, the fact that more employment was, uh, or, or increased employment, mm. way more. Mm. One of the things I, um, I thought was problematic but could potentially have been a good thing is the borders. Mm -hmm. You know, him saying, no, 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 no. If you're from another country, you're not just going to easily cross over. Mm -hmm. Now what's happening in the U.S. is an immigration problem mm -hmm. from Chicago, even the, the issues that are going on in Texas mm -hmm. right now. So Joe Biden said, no, 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 no. If your country is that country, you need to be there. We need to have a wall there and there needs to be certain things. You mean things. Donald Trump, yeah. Donald Trump, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, Donald Trump. In order to get over, you've got to go through these processes, but you're not just going to hop a wall and make it easy. Mm. Right now, Joe Biden's trying to crush the wall. Mm. 
what that means is everybody's coming through and there's already an immigration issue. Now I'm not I don't have a problem with, you know, uh people from Mexico or Canada working in the US and doing their mm -hmm. thing or people in the US going to Canada or Mexico to do their thing. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it in the sense for business, mm -hmm. for for economic development, mm -hmm. you know, in those areas that don't really have a, a strong economy. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reason I don't have that problem, because when I look at Africa, the continent, we don't need to be having borders. Mm. We need to be, it, it, for the most part, there doesn't need to be borders. There needs to be easy movement for black people, for mm. black Africans to go and build business in other areas, to work in other areas mm -hmm. and increase the, uh, the, the economy for the entire continent. But when I look at Obama... Obama's focus was on the LGBTQ. That's mm -hmm. been the. Pro you know what Obama did? And, this and what I, what I know he did uh, definitely is kill Gaddafi. Yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll never forgive him for that. But anyway, no, nah, yeah. no. Oh, 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 Gaddafi. He he killed uh, Obama, uh, Osama bin Laden, and all this stuff. Obama and all of it was over yeah. more than any other American president in history. And quickly, yeah. Like yo, this is this, this is what work. you want to stop the competition. And what was Gaddafi's focus? Well, one Africa, Africa. Mm. That's it. one currency. Mm. Now, was he black? No, but he still had the mindset of, mm. no, nah, just Africa needs to have their own. Yeah, but he funded our liberation movements all over the continent when, you know, they gained liberation. Cheers to that. And, um, and they gained the um, oil fields in Libya. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? So as much as he might be more pro-black in rhetoric, in action, mm -hmm. you know, where he, he put his money where his mouth is when it came to black people. Right. And and at least somebody's willing to do that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I even wrote in a song. I said, "Man, you know, these guys have." Well, paraphrasing. Since when did any president benefit us in office? Mm. Tell me one. Tell me one that truly benefited black people in office. Some would dare to say, "Oh, it was Abraham Lincoln?" No, he accidentally freed the slaves. <laughs> he, mm. he was working for the unions. Abraham mm. Lincoln is the name I wanted to mention earlier, guys. Sorry, did I say Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin. I wanted to say Abraham Lincoln. Was ah, he yeah. black? N uh, no, people people say he was. No, he wasn't black. So, so the first, Amer first black American president was Obama? Yep. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's speculation that Abraham Lincoln was black, but that's only because... Um, the history of him freeing the slaves, which wasn't what his original intent was. Mm. His intent was the support of the unions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it just so happened in order to continue to support the unions properly, there had to be an eradication of slavery, physical slavery. Yeah. But immediately, so the unions are the workers' unions. Yeah. So the workers' unions want to protect workers' rights. The right. workers need to earn a salary for right. the unions to get collections. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there was an economic basis under right. which to end slavery. Also, in Britain, where the um, abolition movement started first, mm -hmm. the there, was a, there was a competition um, um, uh, reason why they wanted to end slavery first because um, uh, Britain had um, manufacturing supremacy from, you know, they had the steam engine and they had better steam engines, they had machines, they were able to, you know, machine iron better than anybody else. So what they wanted was the rest of Europe to stop using slaves, which is something that um, was giving them um, at least a buffer against the um, uh, technological supremacy of um, mm -hmm. the United Kingdom at the time mm -hmm. when it came to manufacturing. And if they could end slavery on the continent, then everyone would have to buy their machinery to make things from Britain and mm -hmm. uh then later Germany because the king of uh, Britain and uh, the king of um, Germany um, were cousins as well. So mm -hmm. it was the so a lot of, of them Russia. Are family. They're all cousins, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and that's why, you know, there was a necessity to end slavery so mm -hmm. that these people who don't have the technology to manufacture goods cannot just find, you know, uh, thousands of Africans and make them make things. Yeah, it was all a matter of the trades. To be able yeah. to open up those trade it had nothing lines. to do with their morality. It had no. nothing to do with them finding God. No, nothing. No, but, but they'll 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 tagline it as though it was. Why? So they can ease the the the, the frustrations. You know mm. what I mean? No, 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 no. It was never about that. It's always about trade. It's always about business. And it was always about who would be the dominant force in the world uh, uh, at large. Yeah, and you cannot tax slaves. No, you can't. exactly. So what's the point of having slaves? Mm. If you have a state, because you need to tax as many people that are working as possible. Yeah. So in 1863, they had the bill where uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln went on ahead and signed that. And then in 1865, was that? Yeah, that was 1863, 1865. Or eight, yeah, 1865, they did the 13th Amendment, mm -hmm. whereas they just brought people back into slavery. Mm. You commit one crime. A felony, prison, right? A felony. But, but the thing was... 
they were accusing a lot of people. So what they did, have them start working on them railroads, have them start developing other things as slaves for a long time. They even did the movie uh, Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence called Life. Mm -hmm. That was based on those things that were mm -hmm. happening back then. Yeah. You know? And it looked like slavery, except they were wearing striped clothes. That's it. But it was it was still slavery. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just imprisonment. It was still in the slash cotton slavery. fields, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when you look at prison systems now, it's still the same and thing. And that's what I wanted to ask you about. Like so, in America, a lot of uh, black population, especially males, mm -hmm. are in prisons. A lot. Private prisons. And that's yeah, free. Private prisons. Free, free, private prisons. That's yeah, free like labor, right? Yep. That's free labor. And for me, that's like slavery yeah. in 2024. Yeah. It still is. It still exists. It's popular. Private prisons is what's what's really bad. You've got a lot of people investing into that, and you've got even some blacks who are billionaires mm. investing into those things, mm. investing into the companies who are developing that private prisons. It's like, man, you're a traitor. Not only that, I mean, like, I mean, the culture. If you see the the type of violence that is promoted in the music, you know, the rap that we talk about. I mean, we did an episode maybe like three years ago, and I said to Sbu, the worst thing I feel about hip hop and why I feel it can never claim black excellence is because <laughs> if Jay Z and Kanye West was no. to sit at this table right now and say stop the violence, they wouldn't be able to. No. You know what I mean? And if you got the two biggest rappers ever, billionaires, and they cannot stop black on black violence and that's mm -hmm. what's being promoted through a culture that you know they are icons in mm -hmm. then you know and they're not saying anything about mm -hmm. it as well mm -hmm. it, well kanye did say killing some whack ish but you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um I, they're not stopping it you know what no, i mean you're not going to and because you've got black people who are quick to say you built your empire on violent talking about violence mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you're telling us to stop we're trying to get where you're at but why does that matter that you get criticism when you're trying to do the wrong the right thing because we're used when to, you're reforming why is it wrong if you were a drug dealer and now you're doing the right thing why does the black community decide to criticize you i mean it's something that happens here in south africa mm -hmm. as well but i want to know from your perspective as Americans, since you guys do it the same as well, you know, as black people, what is it about us that makes us like that? Uh, I believe on the last episode uh, with Spoo, we were talking about the music industry. And I think it's because of the record labels perpetuate um, uh, 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 what kind of music to put out what kind of narrative to put out. And most of the content that are in people's ears on people's eyes is violence. Mm. So if you tell a people, black people specifically, stop the violence. And then right after that, all right, we're going to cut to a commercial break. Then you got a gangster. Yeah, I'm going to shoot you, tell you what I'm going to do. Pow, pow. Come around here. You through all that kind of stuff. It's like you just you just destroyed all of it. Mm. Every bit of, yeah, we do need to stop the violence. That's right. If a nigga come around here tripping, I'm going to. So it's like it's it's like what it's kind of like uh, there was a story uh, uh, of a reporter going to talk with an Indian chief. He said, "Man, there's a lot of spiritual stuff happening in this region. Uh, uh, what's going on?" And the Indian chief said, "Man, I've got two dogs working in me. One's good, one's bad. They fight every day. When I lay down, they're fighting. When I wake up, they're fighting." And the reporter said, "Yo, which one? Wh wh which dog wins?" He said, "Whichever one I feed the most. Mm. That's the issue. What are we mm. feeding ourselves?" Mm. You know, and, and that's going to start that alone starts at the parenthood. Cut off feeding your children anything negative. Mm -hmm. Anything that is going to be detrimental to themselves, their household and the people. And in all aspects, all aspects, what you're feeding the ear, mm. what you're feeding them, what you're feeding yeah. your mouth, what you're feeding your eyes, yeah. everything, right? Yeah. yeah. What you're feeding your heart. Mm. Yeah. What you feed your Because, I mean, we, we have senses for a reason. What? Sight, hearing. Touch, <clears throat> touch, uh, uh, smelling, uh, 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 what are the other ones? Hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, all these other touch, things, right? Yeah. And touch, right? So all these are uh, allow us to connect with nature, L visibility, life, what, what's going on around us. And we collect that as information. Mm -hmm. So if we're collecting that kind of stuff, it's like, all right, well, manage what you collect. Like, you know, I was a bigger guy before. Being out here in South Africa, I lost some weight. You I'm were a smaller losing. guy in the beginning. Though. Yeah, I was smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Checking yeah. out his pictures. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. But the, yeah. the, the journey is that if you ever start small and you get bigger, 
Uh-huh. You know, a lot of people never get back small. So mm-hmm. congratulations on that. Thank you, man. The journey still continues. You know, the marathon. Yeah. I- I'm going to be like Spoo in-, in a little bit, man. <laughs> You know, I have my stuff right. Yeah, I'm working out, bro. <laughs> We're the yeah, same it's, age. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. We got to live long. There's no messing around, man. You got to work He's out. He's trying to build like a UFC fan. I saw him interviewing Drickers, and I've never seen smooth fanboy like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a world champion. Yeah, I know, but it was like a gym thing. It yeah. was like, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. you could go back to gym the next day and be like, yeah, I interviewed Drickers yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, world yeah. Champion, Move yeah. from that machine right now. <laughs> Leave those uh, weights right now. I got, some brownie, I got some brownie points uh, from my daughter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Even oh, better. You're interviewing Drake as the world champion. Even better. Yeah, okay. man. Tell yeah. your yeah. friends at school. One. Tell your friends at <laughs> school. <laughs> My dad is big time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. No, but well done, bro, for keeping your Thank weight you, in man. check. You know, watching yeah. what you eat. So it's exactly what you're talking about. That sense of touch, smell, um, what is it, sight, Taste, all these things. Sight, yeah. The war is against us from yeah. all aspects, and it's a silent war. It's a spiritual war, and a lot mm. of us are not aware even of it, right? Yeah, we become addicted. We become used to it. We we, we put our guards down. It's like, man, we just, you know, uh, it, it's... It's okay. It's not too bad. It's just a little bit. It's like, man, it's kind of like going to McDonald's. You, you, you know, nothing's wrong. going to happen to you. Eat McDonald's no more. Yeah, I cut that off too, yeah. man. I, you know, it's like nothing's going to happen to you if you eat your first cheeseburger. But what if you go the next day and the next and the next and the next? The compounded effect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's the compounded effect. It's like, hey, man, cut that off. Mm. You know, don't just you have to. Each person has to evaluate what's worth me. Mm. That's what it is. What is worth me? This little food here, this little conflict over there, this music for my ears, this uh, 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 thing that's on the screen or, or, or the internet, you know, that pornography. All, all the guns, this, the, the pornography, guns, all, all of that, that stuff. Yeah. Is it worth me? Or is it only up here on this TV screen or in this radio or whatever the case to get me? So who's worth more? That or me? Me. Because mm. if I don't mm. buy it, it doesn't exist. Mm. So since that's the case, eh, I'm worth more. Give me something that benefits me Mm. because I'm worth more. Mm. It's like uh, last time we were talking, I said, man, I'm not human. I'm a God. Mm. I'm made in the image and likeness of the creator. I'm Mm. a God on the earth. Mm. Mm. That's exactly who we are. Mm. I'm not going to see myself as less. Earn my attention. Mm. Mm. Earn my my input. Earn my my, my money. Earn me. Mm. And if you don't earn me, you can't learn me. You ain't Mm. worth it. Mm, so moving on to the next you know what i'm saying Mm. and i think that is the mindset every black person should have hey man we're made in the image and the likeness of the creator earn my attention Mm. give me something that benefits me if you can't give me something that benefits me that i know benefits me yeah you're not worth my time or energy and that speaks to also intentionality of what you you take in Mm -hmm. you know um so we spoke about also like what we're taking in from a food perspective and one thing that um i saw um in new york is a lot more people are more health conscious mm-hmm. so i finally yeah, yeah, found yeah, yeah, a grocery yeah. store in harlem um <clears throat> on central parkway 110th uh, avenue uh 110th right street um and 8th avenue there's a grocery store that actually sells non-antibiotic chicken and you know we love chicken as black people right. you know and i couldn't eat any chicken in america Mm-mm. you know what i mean um even it's nando's real. it was terrible like <laughs> i thought like i'll hate nando's if mm. i keep eating it in america because they got antibiotics in the chicken mm. and all these carcinogenic um uh, compounds that they've got that causes all these cancers that we're going through and um, um speaking of cancer you know uh, i'm very grateful that um this week uh, my dad um is finalizing his chemo therapy um, mm. And you know he's uh, survived. Mm. Get well soon. You know, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, which is something that was stressing me a mm. lot um, all of last year, especially mm. being away from home yeah. and not being able to be with him. Is that one of the reasons why you're back in the country? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the main reasons. Um, yeah, to be with, fa- like I said, I need to be with family, and also we didn't know how long the chemo would take. They, they <clears> said <throat> maybe it might be four months, so he's been in it. It'll be like nine months that he's done. Um, by the time he's completed it. Um, so that's good. But when I look at what we ate in New York, it was really difficult to find decent food. You know what I mean? Another reason why I'm back and I'm staying um, uh, for a little bit longer is to eat proper food. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah. I need to load up as much proper food. <laughs> I mean, even food that I didn't True. eat 
back mm. in the day that I didn't appreciate in South Africa, now I appreciate because of how mm. terrible the food mm. is in America. Right. And um, I was seeing a video on TikTok of someone who like embellished a watermelon and put... Uh, I don't know what they put like put like some candy coated watermelon like a fruit the watermelon they candy coating it yeah. so they've used GMOs and mm-hmm. antibiotics in the fruit and the vegetables so much that they're devoid of any flavor right. you know what I mean um, the chicken doesn't taste like it was ever alive before mm-hmm. you don't know whether the meat was made in a lab mm-hmm. you know or if it ever ate grass right you know what I mean so um that is something that I'm seeing um, South Africans actually themselves turning their choosing not to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of the, uh, the American influence through our media has been adopted like just naturally. But when it comes to the type of food mm-hmm. that we're eating, you know, South Africans are starting to reject the Western um, food. I mean, um, you've got more chisanyamas around and I'm mm-hmm. sure you've visited a mm-hmm. number. I mm-hmm. mean, you've been able to eat things like mohodu and everything else. Yeah, and yeah. You've even a- able to order it on delivery. If mm-hmm. you like it, there's yeah, yeah, restaurants yeah. around here. Oh, yeah, sir. You know, you know, that wasn't here 10 years ago. Mm. We were eating McDonald's, KFC, and whatever else Americans are introducing to us. Domino's pizza was introduced maybe 10 yeah. years ago. What, pizza yeah, you had noticed you got pizza. All, pizza that, all yeah, that junk. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, that all junk. Yeah. Yeah. But only now KFC, are we starting to actually say, whatever. we actually don't want that. We want to eat our own food. Right. We want to start our own restaurants. We want Good. to st- establish our own brands. We want to have our own Gotha Festival. We don't need right. a St. Gennaro Italian food festival. We don't need a burger festival. Mm-hmm. We're not in America. We want, right. you know, uh, a pop festival. That's what that's what South Africa has the opportunity to be. And I encourage this with all South Africa. Like, be the beacon. Mm. That's it. For everybody that's in America, the UK, South America, everywhere, be the beacon. Be, be, don't be like uh, uh, the U.S. adopting the, the, the minds. Like, you see black people on the screen TV. But those guys are paid actors. Mm. Acting what? Like TV means television. Tell a vision. What vision? Mm. Whose vision? Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you don't copy that. Which is True why vision. now you see. You know what I'm saying? Now mm. you, now you see. Uh, uh, what is that show? Uh, Real Housewives of Durban. Mm. Real Housewives of. <clears throat> what are you talking about? Why are you putting all your drama on the screen? Mm. Go solve that at home. Mm. Then tell us how you solved it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Give exactly. us that. So y'all are mimicking the negative behavior, but let me tell you the truth. That's not really our story. Mm. That is fabricated. Mm. Most of this stuff is improv. Only reason it's good is because it was perpe- it, it was perpetuated. It makes money. Mm. It started off like with them Jerry Springer shows, mm. Ricky Lake. Mm. That was fake. Yeah. But it became a reality because it was better than our That was our daily bread growing up. That was it. It was our daily bread. What what the Bible say? Uh, Give us this day our daily daily bread. bread. Including the gangster rap. Oh, yes. Mm. All that gangster rap. So what I was saying earlier, um, in 72, 72, 73 uh, uh, was when, when Black Panther Party was strong. And then and they put out the movie Superfly. Four Martin Luther King died. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. Uh, what do yeah. you think? 68. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, April 68. 70, yep, exactly. Yeah. So so you, you, you see this all, this all this stuff being pushed out. The Black Panther Party strong, bringing people together. Public schools having free lunch. That's because in Oakland, California, the Black Panther Party launched a free lunch program to feed the children in the communities because they were going to school hungry. Mm-hmm. You know, and they worked. And that's what it was all about. Just all of us working together. How do you destroy that? Put a black face on the TV screen and have everybody look at the black face and say, oh, that person's a part of our community. So they, what they're t- the story they're telling must be right. No, they just got paid to fabricate. They mm. got paid to lead you in a way that's going to frustrate your community. And that's what happened. And I look at South Africa. I'm like, yo, y'all following suit. Cut that immediately. Mm. Don't support it. Mm. Now, is that to say that actors and actresses shouldn't have jobs? No, you should. But be mindful of what kind of content you're promoting. And what would happen if, if, if the people who are putting out these things, the Real Housewives of Cape Town and, and, and you know, uh, whatever yeah, come you on, you know, uh, uh, Joe Berg gangsters and all. What if every single actor and every single black African said, no, nah, we don't believe that. We're not supporting that. What is that going to do to every writer? Ah, we got to change the script. We got to do something that supports the people. And when they find a script that best suits the people, mm. that's when you start changing the game. No, but the, when, when you, you they find a script that says, I'll, it finally suits the people, they say, I'll get back to you. Like yeah, all the scripts that are, and they cut them say they're not being submitted. There yeah. are lots of people, there are lots of producers who are submitting these scripts, but they're not getting anywhere. True. So 
Like I was saying uh, uh, when, on our last show, start your own. Exactly like what um, shout out to Ntate Peter Vundla did mm. and shout out to Ntate Hepi Nchingela mm. and um, Mr. Mfundi Vundla's brother, Mr. Peter Vundla. They started the first black-owned advertising agency over 20 years ago, which was called um, Head, Head Boys. Boys. Mm. And Head Boys was such a successful black excellence um, advertising agency that what they did, one of the co-founders of Head Boys' brother, Mm. Fundi Vundla happened to be a television director. They basically took the story of Head Boys and they created a South African soapy, which mm. has become one, not even one of the most successful South African soapy of all time. Mm. And it generated a lot of money for many years, for decades actually, which is generations, right? Mm. It's based on a true story, by the way, for, for those who don't know. Why can't we have such, you know, such stories, more of such stories? Mm -hmm. Because if we could have, if, if we had generations, we, we, we had, uh, what is it, House of Zwiete, mm. where they've got like that fashion line and it's a black family. Yeah, well, I, that stopped, is middle I class. stopped watching um, a, a TV when they fired the cast of Generations. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't watch a lot of TV. I haven't gone back to watching TV since then. But mm. my point is that we can have stories that depict black people in a positive light. Yes. yes. That still becomes successful. And we do successful have those stories. And I think, that have got high ratings too. I think the point is that we do have those stories. We do have those stories and it is incumbent upon the audience that wants to raise children that, you know, um, don't end up being a burden to society and to humanity, that they seek out that content and they're intentionally feeding their children um, that content that uplifts them. You know what I mean? Uh, I know that a lot of people um, hear uh, or get a lot of excuses um, or a lot of reasons as to why they're not more intentional with that and feeding their children their right content. Um, but it needs to be delivered. I mean, my uncle radicalized me. Like my uncle, when he came back from exile, he was like, my nephews are not going to be losers. They're not going to be stooges um, uh, for, you know, uh, the establishment. And he made sure that, you know, we were educated about our mm. history, educated about politics, educated about democracy. Um, I mean, he was a Marxist himself. He came mm -hmm. from the South African um, Communist Party. Um, he was an MK uh, military veteran. Um, so he's part of the armed resistance um, himself. Fresh. So, you know, I've got that history in my family. Yeah. And therefore, the males in my family at least know that it's incumbent upon us, especially to make the sacrifices mm -hmm. um, that our sisters, our mothers our wives cannot. You know what I think would be dope, man, is to see, okay, so we know black people don't really run uh, a lot of the distribution companies. We don't really run a lot of the television Any. networks. Any. I, yeah. I worked at a distribution yeah, company. Yeah, let me I stop. At, I worked I'm at being Sony modest. New York. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. Any. Yeah. Any. We don't own none of it, right? The first time I saw black people working, Yeah. When I mean, I was a director at Sony. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, yeah. Yo. The first time I saw black folk was at the Christmas party. Because I was upstairs with all the white folk. I was a director. Ah, yeah. yeah. So okay. that's when I saw the staff that handles all the blacks that make all the music. Yeah. That the whites upstairs <laughs> came to sell. <laughs> okay, so so here's my thinking. It's like, okay, so we know we don't run any of these things. But the era of the internet is real. So I go back to this. I, I remember back in the day when I was growing up, they had VCRs. That was yeah. the tape yeah, we for still the movie. Okay, cool. Still got it, right? Yeah, we all still right. have that. I still have my old VCRs. All right, bet. So we got the tapes. Follow me on this. Then we had DVD players, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we've got streaming. Mm -hmm. All right. So the problem is, is the control. Yeah. A lot of these networks, a lot of these companies, they just control the way you get entertainment. Mm -hmm. Right. This is why I tell folks, don't throw away your DVD player. Mm. What for? You can get whatever DVDs and CDs. So I would tell black people, do this, especially actors and directors, producers, all of y'all that are in that entertainment industry, I would tell you do this. Number one, create your own content. Number two, put it on disc or tape. Number three, stream it. Number four, should they cut off the streaming or don't allow you to do any of the streaming, put it on YouTube put, or create your own YouTube. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Create our own stuff, mm. right? Number five, if they cut that off, like the internet, or put certain restrictions up, you already got the CDs or the mm. DVDs. Mm. Sell them. Mm. And tell other black people in the population, the, the, the people who are watching, who are not the entertainers, support it.
Mm. Find out what's quality. Support it. Mm. Create your own network and your own stuff. And what's going to end up happening? It's the same thing. I, I would say this. What's going to end up happening is a lot of these big TV networks, a lot of these big record labels, mm -hmm. they're going to start going to the hoods. Well, they don't go to the hood. No, 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 they don't. But they're they going to start going there. They're they going to start going to the neighborhoods and they're going to start going to the black people. Why? Because we are the top consumers. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, ah, we're going to have to change the way we do things. We're going to have to ca we're going to have to get what they have. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, we, bit, we miss out on a lot of money. And number two, we miss out on a lot of that control. You see, my challenge with that, right, is that what I've noticed in South Africa I've been a record executive. Mm -hmm. I've signed many deals with many labels, many artists. Mm -hmm. Me being a black person, I will go to an artist's house. I will go meet, sit down with their grandmother. Mm. But they want to sign to a white person. Mm -hmm. They will sell their grandmother's future. They will sell their great-grandchildren's future. Mm -hmm. They will sell their grandmother's house just to be signed by a, a white, white person. person. Mm -hmm. they, that's it. That's all they think about. You yeah, because I mean? we idolize and fear them. What are you doing? The white person has never even come into your neighborhood. No. He doesn't even know how to dance to Amapiano. No. And you are expecting him to change your life, to be loyal to you. He doesn't know your grandparents. He doesn't no. know your family. He doesn't know what black tax you have to pay. He doesn't care about him at all. He doesn't even mm -mm. give a damn. And you see that in When the Artists Die. The uh, labels are very happy. They're like, oh my goodness, the streams are going to spike. Right. And plus, we don't have a diva that's alive to deal with. That part. Oh, they're diva or divo. They gave us all these problems, but they're dead. Woo, the millions we're going to make. <laughs> all we have to do is make them a living legend. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you cannot make that up, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing that we're seeing right now. I mean, I don't know how many artists have died, how many young artists have died in mm. recent history. You know, whether mm. it be to violence, illness, um, mm. a substance abuse, you name it, that whenever there's an announcement of an artist dying, it's almost inconsequential to us now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter to us. And also, those artists that are dying are not artists that are producing any content that mm -hmm. is meaningful to the people. So even their deaths are not really, you mm -hmm. know, that much of a loss to us. Right. You know what I mean? I cannot say that the generation of the future uh, have lost out by not having a juice world. You know what mm, I mean? Because I, not to say that his music was bad or anything. No, you no, know no. what I mean? It's nice music maybe to listen to, but the actual content... You know, that he's feeding the kids. You know what I mean? Right. When I go on my Apple Music, I like to search what my nieces and nephews are listening to. You know what I mean? Right. And I saw a lot of them were listening to Triple X Extentacion or whatever mm. they call him. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah, still to yeah, yeah you know, know what I mean? I, I just don't want my yeah. nieces and nephews to laugh at me because they're going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I, I hope I got too. it right. <laughs> they be like, Uncle, you don't know what that like. Uh, hey, no, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I remember the days of simple words. Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> Spice One. Yeah. Easy E. <laughs> I G like that's simple. <laughs> I can roll with that. <laughs> like all they got all these new names. Like hey man, y'all complicating this. Yeah, thing. <laughs> yeah. They, they got all these lulls. Um, yeah, but that, ASAPs no, and never broke and all these types of things and mm -hmm. all these artists. You know their content. You know they're just churning it out, churning it out at mm -hmm. whatever um, rate. But you cannot see them actually raising a generation of functional youths no. and with all that power and influence that they have you know i remember tupac saying it man he said you know uh he was in prison he had an interview he said and that was one of my favorite artists actually he was my favorite above yeah. all other artists growing B.I.G. was my favorite artist oh but, okay like, yeah 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 but it's all love. yeah no no yeah, I was both of those two were amazing. i was, I was he, ah, yeah yo, i was still okay. too young Word. to understand what tupac was speaking about i was yeah. six years old when he died see tupac said something man uh, uh hit me hard he said uh when he was in prison and I'm paraphrasing. He was saying, you know, stop just bobbing your head to the beat. Listen to what these dudes are saying. How can they say they love us? How can they say they one of us are black and they not in the communities? They're not trying to help or build nobody up. Listen to what they saying mm. and then hold them accountable. See if they if they for real. Mm. So when I look at these artists and I listen to them, you know, I got a lot of respect for the talent and the mm. abilities of a lot of artists. But I paid because I'm an artist myself. I mm. pay attention to what you're saying. Mm. Pay attention to how you vibe, not mm. just the music. Mm -hmm. I love the music. I love I love the beats. I love the vibe. I even love the new styles and so forth. Mm -hmm. Even though a lot of these artists sound the exact same. Yeah. But you know, I, I I'm I'm a supporter of creativity. Mm -hmm. I love it. I even like how, even though I'm not a big supporter of everything, the content, everything mm -hmm. everyone says, how they say certain things, the metaphors, the similes, mm -hmm. and all that. I, I'm a supporter of that, the wordplay. But uh, uh, it, it's it's like what you're saying doesn't feed us well. Yeah. 
But how you say certain things, that was fresh. That was a, that was creative. That mm-hmm. was really good. So I look at it, and, and, and then I look at, okay, when you're done and you're off the stage and you're out of the recording booth, what's happening? Mm. Where are you at now mm. in the world? Is it just about the shows? Is it just about the, 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 the magazine, mm. the, sh- the, the photo shoot? Mm. Is it just about the next show, the interviews? What is life like? What about the rest of us? Mm-hmm. How are you feeding us? Mm-hmm. You know, and so I hold people accountable. I hold artists accountable. I like some of these new artists. Their their abilities, such as uh, Lil Baby, the uh, mm-hmm. Baby, all about mm-hmm. Lil yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, a lot of babies. I actually yeah. met the Baby <laughs> I, uh, before he actually blew up. While he was still ah, pushing word. sugar, get South by Southwest, and he was wearing a baby outfit like a baby <laughs> bib, walking <laughs> yeah. around the street. He had another friend of his who was carrying like a big, a gigantic speaker, yeah. handing out flyers yeah. to people. Yo, follow me on social media, download my track. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, some of the crew that I was with, you know, were like, oh man, this is like, why would you be walking around the whole entire town <laughs> handing out flyers? We're in the digital yeah. space. You know what I mean? And then he became one Look of the biggest rappers. Look where he's at rappers, now. You know yeah. what I mean? Because he was willing to do the groundwork. Right. And I, I respect that. Space. Yeah, yeah, I respect yeah. that, man. That's, it's, it's creative. I, yeah. I, I don't fault the creativity of a lot of artists. I just say you don't have to keep supporting the narrative that it gets you a lot of money. Mm. Yeah, to get you a lot of money. Who's paying you? Like you said earlier, the exactly. white labels. The white labels. But you won't get, you know what I'm saying? And then I look at certain black labels. Many of the black-owned labels are only trying to connect with the white labels because of more money. It's like, mm. Man, when are we going to start our own? I mean, I'll get back to that. But Yo. I mean, going um, to the baby, if you look at what was the cost of everything that you did to get the money, is that you say one thing about the LGBT community and they take you out. One thing. And cancel then, culture. Now you've been canceled. Mm. Now you've lost that voice that could be a positive influence. Mm-hmm. And maybe you were saying, maybe I want to be bigger first. Maybe mm-hmm. I want to have a lot more money to then have a positive message. Mm-hmm. But you did it too late now. Right. Now right. you don't have that platform anymore to actually do a positive message. So your entire legacy is now the poison that you fed into your community. And the fact that we don't have control over you know, our distribution and everything else is something that actually angers me personally because yeah. it's something that I've staked my entire career on. I mean, the reason why I left Sony mm. in the first place was because I was like, I'm not going to be you know, a, a merchant. I'm not going to be a yeah, salesman. I'm not going to sell my people. I'm not going to sell my brothers onto the slave ship. And for me, um, I was on the distribution space. Mm. You know, I wasn't on the space where rights are bought, et cetera, et cetera. But I'd spoken um, to another music executive, uh, Raphael Benz, about this when we did an interview on his platform, uh, Mosaic Africa. And I was saying, there's no way that we can allow our cultural production as black people to be owned by Vivendi, to be mm. owned by um, Belo, to be owned by um, Sony in Japan, um, um, to be owned by uh, Warner Brothers, you know what I mean? I, I, uh, Len Blavatnik and U- Ukraine mm. are who own Warner, you know what I mean? And that's why you've wow. got Zelensky on every on single them, yeah. um, uh, Oscar or whatever. You've got something about Ukraine on them. We cannot allow our cultural production to be owned by our enemies because what we are failing to see right now is that the wealth that is above the soil, which is the human wealth, our culture, what we mm-hmm. have between our ears is much mm-hmm. more valuable than what's beneath our feet right exactly. now. The minerals that they're chasing mm-hmm. after, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. trying to make sure that we, the actual real valuable things, have mm-hmm. no space to live because they've corrupted our environment um, yeah. through uh, over-extraction. And that's the biggest disappointment I have of the African-American music scene mm-hmm. is that as big as the Jay-Z's are and all of those people, it was only the lunatic Kanye that decided to say, we're not going to be slaves anymore. Right. You know what I mean? It was only him. Mm-hmm. And he's the most ridiculed one of mm-hmm. them all. But what about someone that we take seriously like a Beyonce? Mm-hmm. What about someone that we take seriously like a Jay-Z? Jay-Z, how can you on go onto the stage and complain about your wife not winning another Grammy, which is an inconsequential award anyway, because these Grammys mm-hmm. are owned by white people who are not mm-hmm. even our community. Mm-hmm. Yet you don't even sit down at the BETs, Jay-Z. But I mean, the BETs are not even black owned because that's Sumner Redstone. That's right. Viacom, CBS. You know yep. what I mean? That's one of the big three media companies that own all the media companies in America. And that's something that's been a letdown for me that I've seen there. And the reason why is like, we were comparing um, population numbers earlier, like the 42 million Mm African-Americans in America, the 47 to 48 million uh, black South Africans here in South Africa. And not just as a, 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 
as a market or as consumers, but as producers of good. So if you look at that 42 million um, African Americans in America, they are the producers of the good. That is culture. That is music. That is mm -hmm. the dominant music all over the world globally and in the um, United States of America of 350 million people mm -hmm. who are, you know, mostly not black. Right. So the fact that 12 percent of the um, uh, community can dominate mm -hmm. the culture mm -hmm. of the entire country and be projected around the world mm -hmm. as this is American culture. It's actually just black culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All of American culture is black culture now. And we don't benefit economically from that. We only have a handful of billionaires. Well, it's contaminated black culture. Yeah, the, but that might be the But nevertheless, the I get what you're What I'm yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. say is that what is projected out there is stuff that originates from our communities. Facts. You know what Very I mean? Very true. And that's what's commercialized. That's what's mm -hmm. exploited. That's what's sold. So South Africa needs to be a beacon. It's our responsibility. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I want to um, gather up as many other people who are like-minded as well, especially our artist community. Do not do what happened in America, no. where their entire industry is based off black culture and no black person owns any of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not a single piece not of it one. is black owned. Not, not even Jay-Z owns his no, own masters. He doesn't even own title. You know what I mean? He the gave it up. Yeah, but he yeah. even he sold um, whatever he's given up. I mean, he doesn't even own actual Duce. You know, mm -hmm. that's the vendor financing. And the, how they do that is that they loan you money, right, um, to buy a stake in a company, right? And then they value the company based on its balance sheet. So if 50% of the company um, is half a billion dollars, then 100% of the company should be a billion dollars. Now you've got a billion dollar company. And since you own 50% of a billion dollar company, now your net worth is $500 million. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that's not real money. That's not real wealth. None of that or none of the celebration of that teaches uh, black people how to build businesses. None of that um, is actually success that right. we can actually look to. We cannot look to, Be um, not Beyonce, I mean Rihanna as an mm. example of black excellence because no. she is part of the most valuable company in France, LVMH. You know what I mean? our colonizers, the same people that have put yep. Haiti in the situation that it's in. Yep. You know what I mean? The same people that have supported the Clintons to put Haiti back in the same situation that Napoleon wanted them in, which is a perpetual turmoil. And that's someone who's from Barbados, the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And she's now endorsing them and sanitizing them. The biggest benefactors of the raping and pillaging <coughs> of the African continent by the French, you know, is done... Um, to the benefit of LVMH. Mm. They're the biggest luxury brand that is known all around the world. You know what I mean? We sip their champagne, we pop their bottles and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff and we glorify our enemies. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like mur mass murderers coming out um, into the streets and everybody, you know, cheering. You know, they right. get a ticket tape parade. No, right. we cannot have that. Um, and that's what we have. And, you know, seeing that you are coming to um, South Africa as well and the attitude that you came in with. Because I was just observing and listening to what you're saying because the first part of the interview I didn't want to speak much I just wanted to hear um, your perspective as well and that's the type of attitude that we want from our African Americans that come here mm -hmm. the African Americans that come here are we are not on some BS. No. We are about, yo, black people first. We are about to do the right things. Mm -hmm. We are about to teach our South African um, brothers what it is to be white dominated mm -hmm. where you are in the minority Mm -hmm. And then we're about to learn from them how we can use an advantage of being in the majority within this dispensation that South Africa is That's in exactly what you're saying. Learn, unlearn, relearn, right? Exactly. That's always been my motto. Learn, unlearn, relearn. I think the, the greatest benefit that those who are African-American and those who are South African can share amongst one another is sharing our stories. Mm -hmm. And then identifying what did not work, what does work. Mm -hmm. And remembering our forefathers, remembering that uh, and looking for a way forward. That has to happen. Learn, mm -hmm. unlearn, relearn, reconnect, rebuild, mm -hmm. reestablish. Mm -hmm. Stop working with everything that has been tearing us apart. Mm -hmm. Only thing that's different between us is the water. Mm. <laughs> The only thing Which that's water, different. The Tyler water or the, the H2O? <laughs> <laughs> that, all of that. <laughs> you know, we're on one side of the world and y'all on this side of the world, similar issues. It's just, I, I think what I've experienced is coming from America, a lot of the issues that I see here in South Africa, we've already gone through it. And now we're dealing with a whole new set of issues. And when I come here, I'm like, oh, shoot, you guys are going that way. What does that say? Oh, we got to cut that off quick. So that's exactly, he can, trans, Buddha can translate what that means. To yeah, you. basically it means the ones who've walked the path before. Ah. 
you know, obviously know best mm -hmm. and we have to learn from them, the elders. Mm -hmm. So you guys are more um, adept to the capitalistic world yeah. that we live in. So we need you to come here and teach the skills to those who've been excluded from mm -hmm. any forms of education and, and any what, forms of empowerment, especially, you know, because right. a lot of the temptation is to, there's a lot of rich black people in Johannesburg. I mean, it's the richest black city in the world. It's got the most- Actually, oh. where we yeah. are right now, this is the richest yeah. square mile in the yeah. whole continent. Yeah, this is Sandton right yeah. now. So in the richest square mile, um, in Africa, um, wow. just this suburb has got like and the most the most millionaires in the country. Yeah, exactly. Black millionaires. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, th this is my hometown. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. All> this. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is where I grew up. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was actually telling my I dad the address. Hood, up, yeah, yeah, I grew, I grew up, up yeah. in the hood here. Hey, I grew up in the hood too, but you grew up here. Yeah, I, 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 I only came here in my twenties. I come from the hood. Like you spoke about Alex. Yeah, right next to Alex. Yeah, yeah right next. Oh, okay, gosh. Yeah, but he so, grew up here. Yeah, yeah. Was, his father grew up in the hood. Yeah. Ah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, my father grew up so in the hood. So he's younger. Like my, a decade my mother grew up in, uh, yeah. in Soweto. Uh, my grandmother a decade was also younger than us. Yeah. 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 Decade yeah. younger than us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. The generation after has to be better than the one before. Yeah. Sorry, so, sorry. yeah. So my dad was um, like, I was telling him exactly where we are. So like he actually like, oh, he went through the location in his head because I told him the address. Oh, so you're on this street. Okay, you're at this number. Oh, that means you cross this other. Oh, you cross Winnie Mandela. You cross Maine. Oh, oh yeah. I, oh, I see it like visually. So mm. this is how home is. And I had to get out of here, right, to find myself. You know, I had all this privilege mm. and I found that, you know, it is our duty, us that grew up here, to go to the townships and find not the obviously the spooders, but find the younger ones, you know, mm. the ones that are born after mm -hmm. us or the ones that are our peers mm -hmm. and help them come into this world and learn about, you know, this mm -hmm. capitalist world because we're, you know, we're, we're, we're subject to it. It doesn't yeah. matter where you are in the world, you know, so you need to know how to make it work for you and to right. teach others how to make it work for you. So my personal mission has been to go to the township, you know, and invest in the young talents there and help them mm. have the skills to work on their own and do mm. the, um, things by themselves without the intervention from, you know, um, the corporations or the white owned companies so that mm. they can preserve what it is that they creating um so right now what i'm asking especially for you to do when you go back since you're bringing more um of your brothers um mm -hmm. is more, for more of that and for me you know mm -hmm. our duty is to teach the ubuntu because the capital that's being invested right now is institutional capital that comes from the apartheid era mm -hmm. and that's trying to benefit a new generation of kids that are you know born to white families mm -hmm. who um, don't have the advantage of having the dominance that they had in apartheid, mm -hmm. right? Now, now mm -hmm. it's all fair game. Right. So their kids are really suffering and they're really struggling and their parents know that and that's why they are making sure that they invest even more mm -hmm. stingily And the ones white who are communities. seeing it are actually Europeans mm. that are seeing it. That's why we're saying rather black African-Americans We want African-American money. We don't want European we want money. Your money. We want your money, I'll your tell skills, you what your what brains, mean? your ideas. We want you guys they to They can take that money to the caucuses. We need the most. What we need the most is to remember. Yeah. That's the biggest part. Now, many blacks will say, oh, we need this, we need that. Yeah, 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 you're right. We do need a whole lot of stuff. What we need to know is what the hell happened? Mm. What's going on? What are we missing? What are we lacking? Tell us about the culture of our forefathers. Tell us about the Ubuntu, as you said earlier. Mm. Remind us. Mm. You know, I remember Joshua Mponga, Bishop Joshua Mponga, we were mm. at an event, and he told, uh, I brought about almost 50 people from the uh, from the diaspora, mm. from the U.S. and the U.K. Mm -hmm. out here to South Africa. This mm -hmm. was just uh, in January. Yeah, no, but hold on. First, we need to congratulate that. Because, up to you, you know what I mean? That. That's yeah. great work, bro. South African yeah. tourism, you know, would love to hear such stories. Yeah. I mean, you brought 50 people, you know, however much, if they all spent $1,000 each in South Africa, yeah. you know, that's like mm. how, how much? That's, that's like, like half a 100,000 rands. Oh, that's even that they brought more. In. Even more. $50,000. Because $1,000 in 20 20 20 it's, it's a million rand. Almost 20, yeah, 000. that's what I'm Actually, actually I knew it's more than half a million. million. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. 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 It's not a million. It's not a million. I want to get my 50, maybe. It's a million. I want to get my 50. You brought how many? 20 or 50? 50 people. 50 people. Now imagine if that becomes 500. And, well, ima I mean, and imagine if that selected few has got at least a hundred thousand dollars to invest. Now, you know now what I'm saying is that can do? if you spent a thousand dollars, that's a, a a moderate. That's a lot. That's if you all of you spent a thousand dollars each. That's a million rand that you brought into our economy. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and the thank thing you for is, that. That's I mean, oh right. man, it's yeah. love. And but the thing is, what we wanted to yeah. show, and and that's no, <laughs> that's just the airplane tickets. Actually, that's less than the airplane tickets, because you know uh, it's almost many of these airplane tickets are almost two thousand U.S. dollars. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. to come. No, I found Round that trip. in December. Yeah. I missed Christmas with my sure. family because yeah, it was two thousand. Yeah, that's a whole lot. Right? Christmas, <laughs> but two days after it was like. Four hundred dollars. So, so you're talking about you brought them here and Joshua Maponga continue. So so with just Bishop Joshua Maponga, he told uh, I forget what is it. He told us uh, uh, eat the food. Let the let the food remind you. Let the blood remind you of where you come from, who mm -hmm. you are. You know, put your feet, take your shoes off, get the get that rubber away from your yeah. from your soles, yeah. and let your let your feet touch the soil. Walk with the brothers. Walk with the sisters. Talk with them. not just in the Santon area. Mm, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yo, Connect with those who are in Alex and Timbiso. Connect with those in Pumalanga, Polokwane, and Limpopo. Go to these other areas. Mm. Connect with Go the Go to the Eastern Cape so you can also learn how to click. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm working, closer, you know, yeah, I'm working closer. You know, I'm still working on closer. <laughs> I'm still working on that, man. I still it's got to work on it even though I got the blood. So yeah, see, hey, look, man, listen. It's a, it's a work in pro I'm a work in progress. But, um... But we brought the folks that here. We've got about um, we got another tour that we're planning. In, in fact, um, the end of July yeah. uh, or early August, kind of around that time mm -hmm. frame. We're bringing more folks, and so far we've got a lot more, more than the fifty. Mm. Uh, double the amount of people who are highly interested mm. and coming to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. We just uh, UGKA. We just purchased the building. Um, in, 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 in Villa so, so Street, yeah. yeah. That's Thank you, man. Soweto, yeah. Man. yeah. Mm. We just got that. We want to start doing some work over there and connecting the township in Orlando. Uh, we are looking for for more sponsors uh, because we're going to make sure that that that's unforgettable. In fact, mm -hmm. we named the building Impanza Gurley Center. Mm -hmm. What is it called? The Impanza Gurley Center. Impanza. Impanza, ne? Impanza. Oh, the, 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 one of the, I think that the person, one of the people that, f not founded. Yeah. But one of the uh, no, 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 iconic was. first Soweto residents mm. was Mr. Impanza, right? He was the founder, James yeah, the Impanza. founder, mm. James Impanza. Mm. Impanza. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was uh, the founder of the, uh, the, the soccer team over there, too. Uh, so at the Orlando Which Stadium. One? Morocco Solos. Uh, I don't, I don't remember the name of it. It's Pirates. Google is your friend. Pirates, yo. Pirates. Pirates. I'm a yeah. Pirates fan. I didn't even know that. Yeah, James and Pons. So our, our, our <laughs> founder, the founder of my soccer team, founded my neighborhood. Mm. Okay. So, so him, and then also we named it after uh, O. W. or Tawa Gurley. Mm -hmm. So he was the founder of Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So we looked at here's the founder of Soweto, and then here's the founder of Black Wall Street. We decided that what we wanted to do is. Put these two names and these two stories together. And the third one Restart. is Villa Gazi. Because Villa Gazi, Villa Gazi Street is named after uh, the actual first uh, black PhD recipient in South Africa. And look where we are. And we're only, we're only uh, uh, blocks away from Nelson Mandela's house and, mm -hmm. and uh, Desmond Tutu, the only yeah, two yeah, Nobel exactly. Peace Prize winners it's in on the, the world. same street, yeah. Yeah, so we decided to get an office over there. We, uh, it's the only street in the world with two Nobel Peace Prize the recipients. Mm. Yeah. The yeah. only yeah. one. The only one in all the world. So we're, we're, we, we decided we're going to go ahead and get that and we're, we're already uh, planning our developments and everything like that. Um... We wanted to restart something, revolutionize something very special out here in South Africa. Start here and build upwards to the rest of the continent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the best place to start because I, I think... We need sponsors and volunteers. Since, Keep since working you've with experienced South African uh, um, Johannesburg um, primarily, I think you should have noticed that we're like the New York of Africa in terms of how much of yeah. Africa is in this. Like if you're in how New much York, you see here? all 51 states of, uh, of America within New York, especially... And, as well as people from other countries, but in South Africa, mm. all 54 states of Africa, or 55 states with Western Sahara um, included, uh, are present here in Johannesburg. Mm. You know what I mean? You can find a Nigerian brother, you can find a Moroccan mm. um, brother, you can find Ethiopian. Johannesburg, food. like New York. I exactly. Exactly, but it's the Afro New York. It's I, I, black. I think it's very important for us to emphasize <clears throat> on Obab James and Panza because okay, I yeah. do know a lot of. I mean, you didn't even I know. Didn't him. Know. No, no, no. I know actually. a lot of young people don't know him, especially those who stay in Soweto. It's extremely important to know. That's this the, history. and Thank it's also so very experience Let me, to know to stop and pause and search for the things that we mentioned mm -hmm. in the show. Just like Absolutely. he was did. born on the fifteenth of May. Mm. His birthday is about to be now in eighteen eighty nine. He passed on in nineteen seventy on the twenty third of September. African New 
New Year. See? And he passed on in Sowe to Orlando. Mm. Mr. James Mpanza, a.k.a. Umakepula, that was his other name. He was a community leader and social activist in Johannesburg from the mid-1940s until the late 1960s. In 1944, he led the land invasion that resulted in the largest housing development and the founding of modern Soweto, mm -hmm. which is the largest township in the whole world. Mpanza is known as the father of Soweto. Incredible, incredible, incredible history. Children, Nestafigi Lezaza. His resting place is in Dorenkop Cemetery in Soweto. That's where my grandmother's uh, uh, buried. In Dorenkop. Mm. Dorenkop, yeah. In fact, and the uh, house maybe let me just at the finish off. Is my grandmother's house. His, his other nickname was Sofa Sonke. Sofa mm -hmm. Sonke means we'll all die together. Mm. Yeah. Basically, he was the man of the people. <laughs> wow. He was about all of us. That's it. Even if I That's can it. win, yeah. none of us is a winner until Damn. all of us are. So, Bab James Sofa Sonke Mpanza, aka May the good Lord continue to bless your great grandchildren. And as this history is not known, I've never watched any documentary Mina, in South African television about Ubab James Mbanza. Nota didn't even know. I didn't know. even know. So these are some of the stories that are important. And just before the conversation continues, let me just touch on this one as well. That mm. He was known as the father of Soweto and he led the squatter camp, the squatter movements claiming land. You remember on the previous episode, mm. I told you, told you about how important about land the, is. Yeah, mm. the fight of land is here in our country. Mm. He led the squatter movements claiming land for dispossessed people under the slogan housing and shelter for mm. all. He founded Sofa Sonke Party in 1935. Mm -hmm. This house was a center of the movement where public meetings were held. And as the Boys and Girls Recreational Clubs sprouted around Johannesburg in the 1930s. This man was also affiliated with other amazing leaders. Abo Andres Pelepele Mkwanazi, Nabo Petuel Mokosinyana, the founding fathers of Orlando Pirates, who started the Orlando Pirates soccer team. They groomed their team for glory as we know it today. So know your history, go Google it, read more, ask your father, ask your mother. If you still have a grandparent alive or a great-grandparent alive, mm -hmm. go sit down with them, man, even if it's just one hour every Sunday. Suck out all of yeah. this information. Up, you know, up the bucks. Up the box. Want to buy it? Oh, you know. Hey, hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. So, I learn. <laughs> and, and you know, you know, the reason why we called it in Ponza because we learned about that. We learned about James and Ponza, and we also considered O. W. Gurley in Black Wall Street, or which used to be called the Greenwood District in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was 1905. He purchased the land. In 1921, January, they destroyed it. Mm -hmm. White people, they burnt they it down. Mm -hmm. They bombed it, yeah, destroyed mm -hmm. it, right? Now, mind you, that's about, what, 15 to 16 years max, mm -hmm. right? Mm. They had on 40 acres, 600 businesses, yes. post office, banks, school systems, bus system, movie theaters, restaurants, all these things in 15 years? Mm. Mm. A and remember... Black people are only 12%. But they do the all population. the work. So and we do all the work. So check this out. What happens when we're 80% plus? Uh, what happens in the time frame? Stuff starts happening in seven years, mm. four years, five years, whatever. That's my mindset. Mm. That's what I look at. And I think that's the mindset every single one of us need to have. Too, too, long, too, too long have we been looking for the one leader, one person. Mm. Spool, you be the leader. Mm. You lead us. No, 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 no. Let's all come together. Mm. Let's all have this. 10,000 people were patron in, patrons in that area of the Greenwood District. 40 acres, which is about 16 hectares out here. Mm -hmm. 10,000 people, 600 businesses. Mm. One person paid for the land. Mm. That means not, what is that, 10%, uh, maybe a little more than 10%, something like that, of that, um, uh, that population is the ones who had enough mind to get things moving. Because you don't even have to get everybody. You just, no. You, you just need you know to get 1,000 like-minded people. Do you know what's the worst thing about South Africa? Who are ready to go. Yes, not sir. just not, not those who are ready to not talk, Not just though. talkers, yes. No, 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 no. That's why, like, with UGK, I don't want to talk. That's why I love what you're doing. Because yeah. you already started all of this that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're already here. Yeah. You're yeah. already here. You already bought it, purchased it. You're already buying it. Even yeah. UGK you're is South African-based. Yeah, we did it right here. And I'm glad. I hope American brothers and sisters are watching this video. Other American brothers are jealous because 
they're going to be a lot poorer than UGK affiliates are. But they shouldn't be. Come on. But right now, come on. I, come, I understand how envy and jealousy drives people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like meet people where they are. Mm-hmm. I want them to be envious. I want them to be envious of our African American brothers that are helping create a real black economic base where the Wait, best potential in the right soil. You understand? Where the best potential for it to actually spread all over mm. the African diaspora is. And that's in South Africa. We're the only nuclear power in Africa. Yeah. You need to understand that we got nuclear bombs. Yeah. You understand? So we are a nuclear power. <laughs> We're the only one on the African continent. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Um, Others are growing to it. I think uh, mm. Burkina Faso is 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 closer than any other country at this time to having nuclear power. But yeah, South Africa's got it set up. Niger already. is the, is the greatest Joe supplier of uranium. <laughs> you know? So hey, so France <laughs> France is the is the is the greatest exporter of um, nuclear energy in Europe right now. That mm. Ukraine is facing, you Sorry, know, okay. its challenges no and its difficulties, and the base where um, France gets um, or France, we call it France, but France. Amer- if it, I need to say France, France, France for an American yeah. to understand. <laughs> we know who it is though. <laughs> yeah, for, so France um, um, are y- using um, the uranium that they're getting out of the Sahara Desert in mm-hmm. Niger mm-hmm. and that's actually why yep. you know they put well, their military bases right in mm-hmm. and they're using that um, uranium to actually co- out-compete Ukraine who are the greatest exporter of nuclear energy mm-hmm. in um, Europe at a certain stage in time and that's that's why Macron has even been posturing or trying to say some things that you know France might actually put troops on the ground in Ukraine because Russia has put troops on the ground now in Niger and in yep. Burkina Faso yep. and in Mali that just to repel recently. the French. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so he wants to retaliate by putting troops on the ground in Ukraine. So it's using our African soil as a proxy war so they mm-hmm. can have um, a dominance over the safest and cleanest energy form that we've mm-hmm. been able to create on Earth right now, which is nuclear energy. It's the safest and cleanest. There's less yeah. radiation from a nuclear power plant than there is from a coal um, um, a plant. And I know a, lo- a lot of this because my family was raised in ESCOM. So my mother uh, worked yeah. at ESCOM, you know, since 1993. Uh, my um, sister is a top engineer at ESCOM um, Distribution uh, yeah. as well. And I've got lots of friends. Oh, yeah, so you and Ben. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. exactly about energy <laughs> generation. Yeah, yeah and yeah, plus yeah. I'm in, involved in the business mm. as well um, of energy generation. And energy, that's like our energy consumption is basically like our energy bill tells us um, how many Christmas lights we had on. You mm. know what I mean? How good our economy is. Mm-hmm. And we're judging our economy based on how many Christmas lights we can keep on. And um, right now, we don't have as much investment in the energy that is being produced. We don't have as much investment in the raw materials that are being used to produce this energy. And they're being stolen from us by Western powers. And the mm-hmm. only bulwark that we have against that is the African-American dollar. So mm-hmm. that we can have an ethical form of gentrification happening here. And uh, uh, an actual real economic base that is built off of people that actually understand how the black dollar, the real black dollar, yeah. can circulate all over the world to yeah. benefit the entire world. Because that's the thing about the rest of the capitalist world. They mm. lack the humanity that we have as black people. And therefore, when you put our enemies uh, you know, in the leadership of the hegemony of the world, the entire world suffers. I, I would even say, like, with the black dollar, it's like, yeah, utilize the U.S. I would tell black people coming from the uh, from the U.S., utilize the black dollar while it has value, because we know that it's uh, the competition is very real with bricks mm. right now. But utilize the black dollar while it has value, but just don't be like Gaddafi. Have the mindset of, like, no, 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 no. We need to have uh, a, a currency that works in Africa. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not just following what everybody else has, not a currency that is based upon what other countries or other continents dictate, but our own, our own way of living, our own way of life, everything set up on our own. Mm. Right. Uh, and then when you do that, start creating other other ways and other other movement, other systems that work best mm. for our people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. um, if we don't do that, then we'll always succumb to what others people, other people say. Mm. That's the problem I see of uh, as far as with our folks. Um, I do think we do have the those coming from the U.S. We do have the knowledge of the wherewithal in regards with the power, ESCOM and mm-hmm. Coles and all that kind of stuff. I do think many of them have the wherewithal or have the idea of what we can do to uh, uh, be successful and consistent. No more load shedding and all that. Mm-hmm. Right. 
I, I just think uh, the mindset and the heart have to be for the people in order for that to happen. It has to be. You know, I, I think back, y'all heard me quote the, the, the Bible often because I'm, I'm a strong believer in the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I do yeah. realize colonizers utilize the book to, to try to tell us what was going on. But they disguised the fact that that was our story. They took yeah. your original song and remixed it. They That's it. it. They took the original they took song. They from Ethiopia. Hey, man. And then hey, told us stop remixing our black. stuff. Y'all sound <laughs> whack when you do that. Stop remixing our stuff. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. man, old country road. And, and, then, and then you all come and say, because you, you know the remix, and then you say, this song is whack. It's totally yeah. nuts. But no, it's your story. Hey, Elvis mm. Presley. It's not whack. Music. It was remixed. <laughs> so mm -hmm. go to the original scrolls because sure. it's talking about you. you yeah. Know I mean? It's our original story. And I think... Uh, I think that's the mindset we have to have is, you know, so so like we, we remember the, the you know, people would be like, oh, Jesus, I don't want to listen to Jesus whose name is Yeshua, Yahusha, or whatever you want to call him. Um, is what they say out here, right? Mm -hmm. But when you go back, he was quoting Moses when Moses said, uh, uh, oh, uh, excuse me. When, uh, he was quoting Moses when Moses said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your body, all your soul. And the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. So this Jesus, this Yeshua, Msindisi, he quoted after Moses, Moshe, the same exact thing. And I think that's the mind we have to have. Mm. Love the most high. Mm. Love one another. Simple. Let that be the priority. And then we have success. So one thing that we, as, as uh, some of us, not everybody who's black American, but those who are associated with me and the team for UGKA, we understood that the, the, the thing that in order to really have true power economically, financially, we have to separate from the system or at least be able to not just willing, but also able to. So we started investing in the other things that have meaning. So we realized, OK, well, what's the best thing to invest in? Uh, number one, the people. Mm -hmm. Number two, the lands. Mm -hmm. Number three, God's currency. And what's God's currency? We started getting into silver. Mm. Check this out. Feel the weight of that. Yo, it's heavy, I, I, bro. It's heavy. That's one troy ounce. One troy ounce. Right? Now, the reality is when this system breaks down, Oh, that thing actually, alone have, is going to be worth I thousands. I have three of these. My mother sure. gave me them, but I've got the, the South African ones. So they're called the Kruger Rands. Mm -hmm. I got the South African ones for my 21st birthday. Mm. I still have them. Yeah, uh, on hard times, I wanted to save now. them. Oh, oh, thank you. I can get oh, oh, thank you. That's thank for y'all. And that was one of the Break UGKA the team God. members. So, so <laughs> Thank you. I was one of the you, UGKA sir. team A members. Native American on this side. And then on the ones I've got, I've got Nelson Mandela on my. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's UGKA. We together. want to, you know, because the idea is we have to own our strength, yeah. our wealth. This is the pure silver, triple pure. nine. That's yeah. pure. You know what I mean? This is real wealth. So this is so, silver. So it's, not, yeah. it's, not, it's not a coin. This is silver. This is the actual that's thing. That's real this is wealth, real silver. Yeah. Pure. Uh, you know what I mean? So, I mean. And that's yours. Man. One Troy Oh, is it ours? Oh, thank yeah, yeah. So put much. it in your pocket. Yeah. I ain't going to reach serious? in there. Oh, thank you, bro. Put it in your pocket. Oh, we ain't going to reach you. in there. Thank, thank you, my brother. I'm not, not going to sell it. <laughs> yeah, hey, no, no, never, no, never, no, 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 no. Don't. don't. Yes. Yeah. You only have wealth no, when you I hold on to it. Your children's thank children's. You. Yes. Yeah, I got mine at 21. Remember, sure. I, I'm 34 now. More. I just turned 34. Mm. So my mother gifted me three of these coins thank at 21 you. as my 21st birthday. Thank you, sir. Birthday. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate and it. So I understand the value of keeping these. Yeah. I wanted to keep those ones to give to my grandchildren. You know what I mean? So now I've got another one to keep, uh, give to my grandchildren mm -hmm. to add to that exactly. collection and a story that comes with it mm -hmm. that can... Uh, actually give them more of a determination to, and they can you know, lean that on that they can attitude. they can they can almost borrow against it and only, do you know yeah, what i'm saying exactly. like, hold on to it, your it's, wealth it's like with crypto guys don't sell your bitcoin just borrow against it that's it yeah but don't that's sell also your, thing. if you've got assets that make you a living or passive income just borrow against them if you want to raise money. Don't sell them. Don't By sell the way, your houses. Don't sell your land. Don't no, sell your gold. Don't definitely you know don't, don't sell, sell your land. A lot no. of people have criticized you for encouraging crypto. I just want to congratulate you. You know what I mean? Even <laughs> though we've done some episodes together. Um, when I was stuck in Miami, I had zero money. And I remembered, oh, damn, I've got You've got some Bitcoin. Ish. I know, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> and it got you out of line. Even, even the, the ticket to fly here, yeah, to yeah, come yeah. back home. Oh, crypto. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of dollars, but I had crypto. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you just buy and keep it. Yeah. Don't sell it. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> even if it goes down, don't even worry. I just let it like, forget about you it. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> There'll come a time where God will tell you when it's necessary for you to mm. use it. You yeah, then I mean? you use it. 
then yeah. you sell it or share whatever yeah. you want to do. But in, in other words, hey, just let that thing just sit. You know, what yeah. I mean? yeah. It's kind of like them old school cars. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know it's a 1920s. Just, yeah, it's just, a classic. Just let it leave sit. it alone. It's going <laughs> classic. Yeah, leave it yeah. Alone. yeah. Then Look when it's time, it. fix the engine. Make sure it's on point. Yeah. Now sell it. You got it for ten thousand. Yeah. Now sell it for ten million. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all it That's is. Exactly asset. what you need yeah. to do. Never sell your assets, guys. No. Yeah. A lot of my mentors, if not all of them, mm. tell me the same thing. If there's anything that's an asset that appreciates in value, yeah, it's not yours. First of all, it's not yours. It's for your children. Yeah. Your children's children. So never yeah. sell it. No matter how broke you get, rather borrow against it. Don't mm -hmm. sell it. Yeah, and for yeah. us who have got rands, right, we need to start spreading our rands, especially in America. I've seen, like, just observing the media, the influence in the politics um, mm -hmm. of America that APEC has. And that's, you know, the um, Israeli the um, lobby. lobby. Group, right? Yeah, uh, we don't have a South African lobby group. Oh, actually, we do. We have the DA that has now hired a, an agency in the United States that's a lobby group. And that's the agency that's calling for, you know, a, a review. Independent. No, no, not Cape Independence. The DA and Cape Independence are not um, the same thing. DA needs South Africa to be together so they can have an economic base throughout the entire of South Africa. And that's what they want. As far as Cape Independence says, that will obviously rob the DA from having an economic base outside the Western Cape. The DA has got ambitions of growing outside <coughs> the Western Cape. Don't ever think that the DA would support Cape Independence because it's not consistent with what actually I've empowers I've been hearing them. about this Cape yeah. Independence. Yeah. yeah. But apart from the Cape they Independence... They want to have their own they're, they're town. Trying to, own they're yeah. trying to split our country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're trying to have their, their own small... Yeah. Like, having states. Yeah. I've got, I've got no Cape problems. Town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got no problem how, with Cape how Independence. All the suburban Cape, Cape yeah, Town Yeah, I've noticed looks. that. But in yeah. the hood, Rich you know... Rich and wealthy, yeah, yeah, everything... Yeah. Yeah, because where I was at was not too far from Cape Flats. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. That, Cape Flats is in the hood. More yeah. towards the hood. But you've seen Cape Town. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You've seen the Kems Bays, the yep. Rondadnos, and Constantius, yeah. etc. So they're trying to break that off from South Africa. Yeah, but as I was saying... That's about, very dangerous about, for us, right? About the DA. So they're spending $300,000 uh, lobbying. And already their lobby group has already um, started uh, getting to some senators to speak about reviewing the AGOA pact that South Africa just renewed recently and some other trade deals that South Africa has, you know, because of our policy of supporting Palestine. They already, yeah, they already the started ICJ. speaking about so, that when we took them to the ICJ. Yes. Mm. When we took Israel to the ICJ. Yes, but now DA actually has lobbyists that are hired in America to get senators to actually go into Congress and speak out against the actions of South Africa and mm. try and have sanctions placed against them. So they're trying to take us back to apartheid, which is when we had sanctions against us with a black government. Imagine that. Mm. You know what I mean? Now that we're finally free, the DA is using its money and black South Africans are not using their money to actually mm. go over there and use the influence of Congress, which has influence all over the world because, you know, um, the military might of um, uh, the United States of America. Mm. We should be lobbying. We should be lobbying, you know, um, for our trade relations to be a whole lot better. We shouldn't just have representatives that um, are sent to go be deployees at the World Bank or, mm. you know, the World Trade Organization or wh whatever, it is, the IMF, you know mm, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We should actually have people that are hired to serve our interests that get senators and um, um, uh, congressmen to actually um, mm. enact policies that will benefit Africans and South Africans, you know, directly mm -hmm. the same way that Israel does, the same way that Ukraine does. Yeah. You know the what I mean? The same way that I, APEC does for yeah, Israel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Dr. Yes. Arcana, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with her out of Zimbabwe. She huh. just pushed and said, all of you countries stop borrowing from the World Bank and IMF. Yeah. So it's funny you brought that up because yeah. like you're borrowing but you remain in debt. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And they end so, up yeah. taking our sovereignty. Oh yeah, facts. But they take that sovereignty are you borrowing, uh, borrowing. That's the, the trade-off. Yeah. No, no. The, 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 let me break it down for those who don't understand the, the sovereignty part. When you borrow in dollars, right? You have to repay that money in dollars. The problem about repaying that money in dollars is that when you earn the money that you need to repay in dollars, you earn that in a different currency. So what you first need to do before you can even pay back that loan is convert your inferior currency into dollars, which then means that your debt is even further uh, a burden for you. And that on top of the interest that you're paying, you're also paying for the difference in um, uh, the currency evaluation. And the real crime that has been committed on the wealth of South Africans, especially the most impoverished South Africans, is the fact that the Reserve Bank right now made a profit by tanking the rand, right? And this profit that they made, right, was a profit off of the trade between uh, rands and dollars. And um, Treasury just announced in the last budget speech they're going to use half a billion um, rands 
of that budget, right? Um, to pay down the debt. But now you're paying down half a billion rands with that debt. You're not doing actually anything productive with that money. I'd rather, as a business person, right? Because I'm a business person and none of the politicians that I've seen have actually run a business from the ground up. I'd rather spend that money doing something that will actually generate a profit. You know what I mean? If I'm going to spend half a billion, I'd rather build a factory than use it to pay debt. So now we're being told, no, we're using this to pay down this debt, you know, um, and this debt is still growing, but we're also going to continue to pay back the rest of the debt with rands, which are weakening. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. So you weaken the rand so you can make enough of a profit to pay down a debt which is growing because you are paying it back in rands either way. You know, the rand is 18 um, or 19, 19 to the dollar. Now, yeah, it's 19 to the dollar. Yes. It, it changes a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, so do you, do you know that at the beginning of the Bab Cyril Ramaphosa president, it was 14 rand? That's exact, I know that. Just hardly four years ago, five years ago. I know that. So it benefits those that earn in dollars. And who earns in dollars? The owners of capital. Yeah. Guys like Nando's, guys like Cecil, you know, guys like uh, all the big corporations, anglo Americans. Nando's was based out in the UK also. No, I'm just saying they're a company that's expanded outside of South Africa. Oh, yes. But if you don't own a company as big as Nando's, you don't earn in dollars. True. You're getting poorer. True. That's what I'm saying, you know. So they're making us poorer and poorer. I mean, I mean if we went for 14 to 19 now, you know what I mean? In that's, five years, bro. That, that's that's you know, ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. That's um, more than a third. You I mean, know think I mean? less, less than 20 years ago, there was six rand. No, think about that. So, so it <laughs> makes the people bro? poorer and poorer. And it's all based upon the resources that are mm. coming from here. That's why, I that's, think that's why, a shame. That's why a lot of people are excited. But when America wants to yeah. borrow money, it's our own minerals, bro. Yeah, I mean, people are excited. Only thing I have against bricks, I, I, it's not, I don't know if it's against bricks, but the only thing I don't like, it's not African based. Yeah, mm. that's the only thing. That's, that's the only. That, that's, that's why I'll never forgive Obama for killing Gaddafi. Ah, anyway, no, nah, 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 nah. But nah. it could have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, love Obama. Could, and that's that's the only nah. problem. Nah, I ain't even. No, I ain't like, even gonna say I love Obama. I don't why. love Obama because bricks was started problem. by Ibsa. So Ibsa was India, Brazil, and South Africa. That yeah. was the first organization that was started under the Thabo Mbeki administration. Mm. And um, when uh, Lula came in, um, he expanded the program. Uh, with um, Jacob Zuma and then became BRICS with the inclusion of um, uh, Russia and, and, and China. That's it. Yeah, and, and that's <laughs> Russia and China are Because we needed a military base. Yeah. We needed military powers as well. Because Brazil is a military power in its region. It's true. Right? South Africa is a military power in our region. You know, India is a military rival of China. Right. Right? <laughs> so to break that rivalry and create a new pact, it was let's bring in China, let's bring in um, Russia as well. And the biggest reason why the U.S. or even uh, European doesn't like it is because the U.S. has been the military might of the world. Yeah. And then you've got the the, the economic might of the world in London, which is yeah. why Washington, D.C., London, even the Vatican yeah. are not owned or not uh, uh, recognized as a part of those particular countries. Exactly. They're separate. Even they're the all London separate. financial district is not the part of the The financial district. UK. So it's completely yeah. separated, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, you know, it made me kind of question a, a, a thousand question marks started popping up in my yeah. head like uh, how are you separate like you know what i mean but that's the deal it's so they so have to we can in. pay taxes and the smart ones exactly don't. and they don't so i look at russia and i look at china i'm like you two are the next so u.s is the greatest military might in the world next to it is china and russia but now you got both of those two coming together mm -hmm. so now they are now the greatest military might in the world mm -hmm. and what did they do connect with saudi arabia mm -hmm. connect with brazil connect mm -hmm. with india south africa mm -hmm. and the other countries that are around the world yeah, and getting with ethiopia and then but messing with the middle east is mm -hmm. what's messing with the u.s dollar mm -hmm. so a lot of people see the u.s dollar has power right now and it does mm -hmm. but for how long because mm -hmm. the u.s dollar is no longer backed by gold but mm -hmm. by, by by oil oil yeah right Where's their oil coming from? The bulk of it. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, yeah. Middle East. Mm -hmm. So now if Saudi Arabia or the Middle East is partnering with BRICS, that means that U.S. dollar only has value for... It's on mm -hmm. an uh, expiration date. It's coming down. Exactly. But I don't know if you've heard... Uh, Saudi Arabia starting to accept um, other um, currencies as well. Benjamin. Saudi Arabia is accepting real... Benjamin Sorry, Yeah, Saudi Arabia is accepting other currencies yeah. in in trade for their oil as well. Yeah, I just seen that. Yeah, in yeah. The, yeah, so yeah, yeah. they're expecting uh, real, they're expecting uh, the uh, rubles as mm -hmm. well, uh, renminbi, which is the the currency that is used for trade for um, for China. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, the the currency that backs the yen. So their treasuries mm. are, are are called renminbis. So yeah. I wanted to say they they just they also treasury bonds. Sorry, the they treasury also bonds discovered um, um, uh, gas in Gaza. 
Yes, and of also, the coast. Apparently, if you go check out Benjamin Netanyahu's presentation to the um uh, not the UN The uh, Knesset. The, um, the Knesset is the Congress uh, or whatever. Anyway, the, world, the, the, the UAE. Davos. Just Google it, guys. Yeah, mm. World the, Economic the, Forum. The World Economic Forum, guys. Oh, oh, he presented yeah. the plan that they have in extracting that gas from Gaza and also in them joining and opening up the Suez Canal so they're able to not go all around Africa, the to South other Africa. way around to the oceans. They can still use the Suez Canal. Well, so that apparently, canal allegedly, mm. don't quote me, it's also a part of... Um, Larry Fink, um, BlackRock. Martin, um, no, being Funguti, they are reacting on the... Basically, they are, they are reacting on the BRICS move. Yeah. Mm. That's their response to BRICS. Yes. Yeah. Well, be- be- I- because cause you, not, you need to understand, now, you, you spoke about the relationship between China, mm-hmm. you spoke about Russia, mm-hmm. and Middle East, they're mm-hmm. still not sure. Yeah. But, yeah. The, but they did show interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, they're showing high a interest. a lot of African so, antri- yeah, countries yeah, yeah. Mm. in Another, India, you've got a lot. So a lot of them, they're trying to counter that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that apparently that's also part of it. So, that. I mean, yeah. like, when we think like that, another thing is that for my African-American brothers, yeah, come and invest in South Africa before the nuclear war Do breaks out. now. Before the nuclear war breaks right out. Right Because if Russia is saying they're going to back Palestine and Israel is saying we're going to flatten Palestine, someone's lying. Someone's not going to do what they're saying they're going to do. One of them is going to flatten the other. You yeah. know what I mean? So we need to find out where is the safest area for us to be in nuclear war. South Africa is the safest area in the world I'll tell you nuclear this. war. I'll tell you this. Africa, sub-Sahara Africa, period, is mm. the safest place to be in the world. Yeah. And the reason be is because even it, when nuclear uh, uh, um, uh, war happens, mm. and, and it's going to happen, mm. when, I, we don't know, but mm. it's going to happen mm. probably sooner than we think. Mm. Africa, period, because survival is based on Africa survival. Mm. The rest of the world's survival is based. I mean, like I, I said, it's based uh, on technology. It's based on the technology. Everything the is agriculture. All the minerals, all the, minerals, all the resources, mm-hmm. even the all your, people, all your cell phones, mm. all your everything. Everything, everything yeah. Steel, is based. Micro, fur all chrome, of it. Platinum, Cocoa gold, to survive. diamond, coal, All chrome. these things are based on Africa, Sub-Sahara Africa, all of Africa, period. Mm. I'm just speci- I'm specifying Sub-Sahara Desert and uh, the, the Sahara Desert and on down. All of this is crucial for the rest of the world to survive. If Africa goes down, everybody goes down. Mm-hmm. So Africa is not going to be uh, uh, as affected as many of the other countries around the world. Mm. Now, eventually... Africa will have a war on its hand. Mm. Africa will have to be the host to a war. Mm. But those who are going to be fighting have to understand uh, uh, and they know there's only so much we can do because if we destroy this continent, everything is going, including us who fight. There's a war Mm. as we speak, just right next door, Congo. In the Congo and Rwanda. Yeah. Everybody's quiet about mm-hmm. it. Mm, I know we're all going mm-hmm. crazy over And they don't publicize it heavily over in the US. They don't. No. no. So you have that's to where the interests are. Exactly. Right? There's a reason why there's a war there. Heavy it's they don't publicize yeah. here in South Africa America. as yeah. well. Matter of fact, even even I was looking at some stuff here in uh in South Africa. Uh there were two guys. South Africa's uh, actually very one was complicit French. in that war. Two, one, one guy, two guys. One, one white guy was French, and the other one, I think it was, yeah, he was French, and the other one uh, sounded like he was American. They, they literally admitted to being the progenitors of, or, or the people who instigated. I'll say it that way: xenophobia and HIV. Mm. Here in South Africa, divide and conquer. Mm. I've yeah. seen, I've seen, divide I've, yeah. and conquer. Divide. It's always been like that. It's yeah. always been from the Berlin so, Conference, bro. Yeah, like yeah. Back in the day, in the eighteen hundreds, yeah. Even divide before and then, conquer. because because here's the deal: if you have black people who don't come together and they separate, it's easy to destroy them. This is why, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna do a sh- another shameless plug: UGKA. <laughs> all right, this UGKA is UGKANow.com. Dot com. I'm telling you, UGKANow.com. But this is something that's important to us: is we see how you all here, born and raised in South Africa, have been. You guys have been struggling. Mm. You see how we've been over in the United States. Mm-hmm. We've been struggling. Mm-hmm. Separated. The most important thing for us to do is no longer be separated. Mm. Now, I look at Zimbabwe and I well, look no at South Africa. no longer be separated as blacks, but separate ourselves from our enemies. That's it. That's Unite. all we have to do. Yeah. Blacks together. 
blacks and others, uh, we'll we'll talk to you later. Let's when first deal with us. Yeah, <laughs> we got to we got we got some stuff we got to clean up in house. You know what I'm saying? But I look at the xenophobia between Zimbabwe and South Africa, and I'm mm. like, dang, that's your next door neighbor, yeah. and they black, and many of them are Bantu or whatever the case. Why would yeah. you hate them because they came up differently? Oh, I realize it's because the forefathers, two brothers, they hated each other. They were upset. They were fighting in a dispute. Don't you do that now with your brothers and your sisters? Mm-hmm. You dispute? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. That happens. We know that. That's family. Mm. I'm not saying I know it all. I'm not saying what's uh, uh, what happened uh, uh, didn't frustrate some things. What I'm saying is if we don't decide, I won't even say find a way to work together. No, decide that no matter what, we're going to come together. We're all destroyed. And you know what South Africa is doing and right now? And here's the proof. History. We're, mm. we're destroying Zimbabwe right now. We're milking it of its talent. We're milking it of its human resources. We're milking it of its best skills. We're milking it of its resources. I you mean, know what we provide happened? them with ports. So we provide them with a way to export markets. So yeah. we are holding basically Zimbabwe hostage, right? And we're using the fact that we can offer labor opportunities yep. for the cheapest labor. So right. we are using our Zimbabwean brothers as cheap slaves. So check this out. You know what happened with, with, with Zimbabwe? What should have happened? Mm. Soon as the U.S. put sanctions on Zimbabwe... South Africa should have said, we got your back. Yeah. You know who else should have said, Zimbabwe, we got your back? Mm. Every other surrounding country. Mm. But they couldn't because their corporations are mostly U.S. owned. Right. You understand? Mm-hmm. And even when the sanctions were imposed, they weren't really blanket sanctions. They were sanctioned individuals. Yeah. But the propaganda around there said, oh, you cannot mm-hmm. bank if you're in Zimbabwe. Oh, you cannot finance projects in Zimbabwe. And, and Zimbabwe is, is one Kadhafi of the markets. So I mean, the Zimbabwean um, economy is worth $47 billion um, a year. It's one of the biggest economies in Africa. Yeah. You know what I mean? With less than 20 million people in his population. Oh, and by the way, for long time, you know, Zimbabwe is wealthy. Yeah, it is. That, it's, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's extremely Zimbabwe wealthy. Extremely wealthy. Extremely wealthy. <laughs> and the reason why we don't know that Zimbabwe is extremely wealthy is because there are certain people that want to get rich alone. Mm. That's you it. know what I say to the U.S.? I, I say this. Because, I, you know, I know I'm born and raised in the U.S., my number one priority is the kingdom of the most high and that's the people of the most high and those are the black people the bantu number one priority you can love me you can hate me i really don't care at the end of the day that's my result number Mm. one his people that's us number two if u.s if the u.s were smart the because i know i'm born and raised over there the best thing you could do is work with instead of trying to overcome africa i think let's end it there (laughs) <laughs> it's too long for me to I see the guys being like, oh, yeah. they're running out stop. of tent. <laughs> I was beautiful, bro. Oh, man. No, thank you so much. I missed love. you, bro. No, we could talk forever. I know. And we'll talk some more. <laughs> I, was a beautiful, I was a beautiful verbal sparring. Yes, sir. I loved it. I just had to shut up. And I missed him. <laughs> every time I sit with him, I learn. Yeah. And we have like love, amazing man. conversation. Yeah. He, he gets on other platforms. Yeah. And, and uh, they, yeah. they, they want to trend through yeah. him. Yeah. So they drag him into trending <laughs> topics. Yeah. yeah. Into talking about music and yeah. celebrities yeah, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But every time he's on this platform, he mm. drops knowledge. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man, I love and it. Man. I, I missed him. It. I yeah, missed him, bro. Yeah. So it's good to see Powerful, him here. Man. And Thank I'm so you. excited that he met you. Yes. And I was no, very I'm happy so to excited that I met verbal my, spa. my mirror. Uh-huh. The yeah. other side of the mirror. Yeah, there it the is. The one who's coming this side, just mm. as I'm going that side to collect other brothers. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? Because I need to be able to tell him, yo. One of your Dante's out yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Check him out. Yo, you don't believe me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not, no like, snake oil. Yeah. Like, seriously, like, yo. Yeah. And he's thriving, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. You know I mean? No, tell last words to the country. Missed you, bro. Yo, man. Um, thank you uh, for all the support of all the people that are on the Hustlers Corners and, and, and following this um, platform anymore. All our viewers. Uh, uh, I think... Um, it's been great to be back home, you know, feel the soil a bit, also engage um, with some other people and also to all the people that are encouraged to start making content. I think the one thing that you wanted to do was inspire other people to start making comments. I mean, content. Uh, I've seen a lot more uh, platforms growing. Um, a lot of them, you know, with more fire cans, yeah, you know what I mean? Just beautiful. to, yeah, just to pay homage to, uh, you know, the person that's inspired them. And, you know, thank you for uh, giving us all uh, a platform, you know, and also um, taking bullets for us because coming from mainstream media to do digital media and to take yourself seriously when everybody's like, oh, you've fallen off and to be consistent and to still stick at it. I mean, uh, it's 2018. So this is six years now. Yeah. 
Just there you go. <laughs> and please oh. note I love you so much and yeah, I know you've got you. a great heart. You're always empowering yeah. younger and smaller podcasts, yeah. visiting them everywhere. Yeah. But try and bring the guys to um another level of thinking. Try and yeah. up up their uplift um, them, yeah. Their conversations because they always try and drag you down to controversial topics yeah. that just talk about my new things about celebrity yeah. and all of that stuff. Yeah. So they can trend and grow. Yeah. But I think from now on tell them to yeah. not worry the, yeah. the episodes are going to do well but yeah. let's have meaningful conversations no, yeah. guys so. stop inviting Nota to come talk about <laughs> celebrities because <laughs> you know he speaks his mind because yeah. that's what you guys want you want to trend but stop yeah. stop going you watch my one on Justify stop I've checked out all your episodes. Justified. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. But like Justice is, a, is, yeah. My, is, yeah, my, yeah. is my boy. No, I like that one. I enjoyed guy, that one. Right? I enjoyed that one. But but what I wanted to say is, um, up your level, guys. Take Nota to yeah. take him up there. Because yeah. when, he gets on your, when he gets on your podcast, he dumbs things down. <laughs> and he still drops knowledge, but he's like, and I don't <laughs> want that Nota. I don't want you guys to keep on um, relying or yeah, dwelling on someone that. Else old, for that. That's the old Nota. <laughs> yeah. the, the now Nota is the one you experienced just now. Because these are the type of conversations. Yeah. And, and for the new subscribers of the platform who've never seen our old episodes with just me and Nota. Yeah. I think we've got about maybe 10 old episodes, yeah. you and more. I. All those episodes are not about who's dating, who, who's smashing, who, what celebrities. They're none about, they're mm. not, they're more than what we've just did today. So mm. he's intelligent, this man. Mm. He's on mm. another very, level. And please meet him there. Take him there. You. Stop asking him about <laughs> trending topics it. and celebrities. I love yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for very that. You know, I, I would have said it myself, but you said it better. <laughs> <laughs> President, the president. Oh man, we in the mix, my brother. You're my new These brother, messes. man. Oh, likewise, I man. I stay down the road. I'm, I, I'm just seeing yes, my kids sir. play around here. I'm seeing your kids play at my house. Oh, please believe, And I'm seeing man. all of us are break bread and grow together. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah she's in Yama God all over the place. Bless you, you brother. I appreciate you. You're more than welcome. Yeah, yeah that's um, what it's all about, family, man. Last words. Which camera? Which camera? L last, last words to the people over there. Let's wrap it up. Uh, last words. Listen, at the end of the day, for business-minded people, you can become sponsors. You can become partners with UGKA. With or without you, we're moving. So with you, we move together. But if you're not, if you're on some manga manga business, I done learned that out here. <laughs> hey, I done learned that. If you're on manga manga business, if you're not really about the people, yeah. I don't want nothing to do with you. Yeah. I will not even accept you. If we find out you're really not trying to be genuine yeah. and really about the people, and we do start working with you, we cut you off, and we will have contracts in place. Like, I got plenty enough lawyers from the U.S. and South, uh, South Africa yeah. who are working with me to make sure that we are on the up and up. We're doing everything righteously. We're doing everything lawfully and in the right direction. So if you want to become a sponsor or a partner, partner with us. Contact us on UGKAnow.com. The emails and the information is there. If you are of the public, the people, at the end of the day, we don't have next. We got now. Don't look for somebody else to solve the problems that you can solve today. Get to work. Start working on this. Have the mindset of forward movement maybe you're not somebody who's about business or starting your own business but you may be an educator you just want to see people do well you may be somebody who wants to have a medical clinic well let's partner together let's help the areas that are disenfranchised at the end of the day forward movement is where our minds are at and as if you with that, let's go. As President Lavell Walton, follow yes, him, UGKANow.com. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you on the radio on Monday morning. Yes, I'm back on mainstream yes, media. Sir. We're about to build the biggest breakfast show this country has ever seen. We're about to stream on all platforms. We're about to bring all of the internet guys onto radio. Yes. I'm back on radio, man. I miss <laughs> the one thing that I did since I was a teenager. I'm back at it. I'll see you on Radio 2000 Monday morning. I love you. Yes, sir. Salute. Congratulations, Thank brother. You, brother. Yes, Thank sir. You, bro. Thank you, brother. Radio yes. 2K. Oh, you are. Radio 2K. Dango. <laughs> Tito. 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 The only thing that prays for you when you open it says. Dango. Oh. 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 Mofa. <laughs>